Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to this week's new episode of Primetime Gaming with Mr. Boomstick and Friends. And ladies and gentlemen, we have an outstanding panel and a bunch of great topics. Uh, we got some breaking news. Apparently, it has been put out there that the FTC is going to file their appeal with the Ninth District Court regarding uh, not being satisfied with Judge mm -hmm. Corley's decision. Uh, thankfully, we have someone on the panel that is going to break that down. Uh, apparently, it's a it's a, a lot of lot to do about nothing, uh, but we'll get into that momentarily. Obviously, yesterday, Xbox fans across the globe uh, took their victory lap as the FTC was beaten for I don't know what is it seven or eight or nine times already. Uh, obviously, Lena Khan. Uh, is uh, still in hot water. She's going to be sitting down grilled uh, by Republicans uh, at Congress tomorrow. Uh, she's also holding back some documents that apparently may have her charged with uh, contempt of Congress, which is, Cargi, we talked about that before. That's a pretty big deal. Um, I don't know what exactly is going to happen. Uh, we heard yesterday that the CMA was going to work with Microsoft and accept a, a small divesture uh, to cloud. And then, of course, it was reported today that the CMA is playing hardball again. And I think uh, there's some shenanigans there. Uh, apparently, the the uh, an announcement of the small divesture might have been uh, put out there too early. Um, and uh, we're going to get into all of this, folks. At the end of the day, this deal is still going through. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, I don't think that uh, the federal Ninth District Court is going to overrule their own judge, um, especially when she did write up some pretty damning things against the CMA's case, which was weak source. We all knew it. We were all there in in in, uh, in, in the Zoom, uh, uh, you know, listening to the case and. It, it just it just seemed like it was going to go Microsoft's way. Thankfully, it has. But let's get into the uh, introductions. And we have someone joining us as a guest today because um, we have uh, two people that are going to not be with us. Uh, uh, Kea Sante is uh, vacationing with family. And Wandering Dutch will probably return to us next week uh, as he uh, deals with the heat in the UK. But Joining us is one bad mother. How are you doing, brother? Welcome. You you you, you come back at a really, oppor uh, really special opportune time. Right, right. Well, usually, I mean, usually when I say I'm going to come on, usually stuff breaks right before the show. So, uh, I mean, it's not a perfect track record, but pretty good. <laughs> there's always there's always something happening, right? So, I uh, know it's great to be here again this week. Uh, thanks for for having me as a guest and. Definitely a lot of interesting theories and things like that that I'm looking forward to uh, getting to the bottom of with uh, with the panel today. Yeah, we're going to have a great conversation, folks. So uh, buckle in. Uh, if you are new and finding the channel for the first time, folks, we are 42 subs away from 13K. Can we get those 42 subs today? I don't know, but it would be pretty dope if we did. Uh, but uh, Everborn Saga, you you're going to be talking a lot today because you have really been doing your due diligence unlike the ftc to you know talk about some of the finite points of this case and uh man i the, the i i know I'm, I'm i'm speaking for a lot of people here i just can't wait for the ink to be dried already i'm just so tired of uh, about the ftc i'm sick of the cma uh, I, i'm just i'm just tired of it all but welcome bro how you feeling Oh, I'm 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 feeling fantastic. Every time these new like juicy documents come out, uh, I, I always get excited about this stuff. Uh, this th these these things are fascinating to me, and uh, I just say out there to to the audience: don't let anybody tell you you're too invested. It has nothing to do with being invested. It's about mm -hmm. being inquisitive and learning and reading. Because we've all been on on a real. Uh, uh, journey here, and I think we're all sort of a little bit smarter by, by well, most of us. 
Because there are some well, knuckleheads true. out there. That, that is but, true. You have, you have to um, make sure you, you, you're straight with that point. But, but no, reading these things, understanding how our government works and how regulatory the regulatory process works is super interesting. Because guess what? The next time something like this comes up, you'll be able to know what all these terms mean, right? The yeah. RBCs, the relevant consumer benefit, the, the SLCs, right? And so when something actually bad that might actually affect you comes up, you'll know how that process goes and you'll be able to follow along. So I think all in all, these things are good things, things that get people reading, things that get people involved in uh, government or whatever, or at least understanding the process of government. I think those things are good. Uh, however it turns out, but we'll talk about how, how we think it's going to turn out. Uh, but however it turns out, I think we've all been uh, educated. And and in my mind, that's a fantastic thing. So I'm excited. Well, and yeah. I'll throw in there, though, Everborn. I, I also don't think it's – it's it, I think it's okay if people want to be invested for whatever selfish reasons. Uh, as customers, you're allowed to have – <laughs> whatever your selfish well, you should you is. actually should have a you vested know. interest in what you're paying for yeah so, so. I, I i think there is some of that too uh i know uh everborn and you and me are both probably on the same page here we would have preferred the much much uh less expensive uh sega over listen it's ABK. not too late it's not too late they can walk away and just go after but, the superior publisher sega right now that's the thing that could happen i would not bat an eye as I'd a matter of fact i'd cheer it that. on yeah, to come to Game Pass. But I think it's okay. I think it's okay that people are do care because there is it's like acting like there's no benefit other than system wars. Is you know what? But we'll get into that a little bit. Well, I I, 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 I wanted to say something. Two seconds about that. Yeah. Two seconds. I won't go too long. Why the most frustrating thing about this entire process, and you can see it. You see it from from media, you see it from regulators around the world, and what they're effectively telling you is that as an Xbox customer, you don't matter. It Pretty does much. not matter what benefits come to you. We are concerned with the other people because when we say gaming, we're really talking about PlayStation, and the harm to them supersedes uh, anything to you, but it's okay uh, for for contracts that would that would foreclose you from content, that's okay, right? Yeah. Th this is what the regulators say. They say that it's okay for you to lose content, but for you to get something good, which is, I just had to buy uh, uh, Diablo twice, seventy dollars a pop, hundred and forty dollars, mm -hmm. because Activision does not support cross buy. Well, you right? know, what? And, and I just bought the Rog and, Ally, right? And I I paid for that. And I, I'm waiting for the, you know, once the deal goes through. I, I'll right. Be, I'll, but I'll I get, I gave free. you guys the benefit of the Everborn curse. I bought it for you. So now it's going to go into Game Pass. <laughs> but the point is $140 for something that would be in a subscription I'm already paying for. And we just have to ignore that completely. Right. Because we don't matter. But anyway, <laughs> I'll, I'll go on that rant later. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're we're gonna be here for a minute, uh, folks. Uh, get ready for a uh, powerful two-hour conversation because you know, obviously, we have everyone here that ha that has a vested interest in this. We have been here since it was announced nearly twenty months ago. Hargi Chani, uh, again, Tom Warren has just confirmed, uh, and I'm 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 on his uh, uh his Twitter page right now. Breaking news: the FTC has in fact filed an appeal against Judge Corley's decision. To deny its preliminary injunction request over Microsoft's proposed Activision Blizzard hail Mary. acquisition. Yeah, this is definitely a hail mary. I, I don't even know if it's going to get seen. Uh, if they could, because well, uh, well, 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 one well, thing we'll I'll get... say about this, and I know it's breaking, but this is it, right? This is literally if it is not granted, and we'll talk about about what the odds are, right? If if that uh, temporary stay is not granted, which is basically like another TRO. It is over. It's over for them. Completely kaput. Done. Over. So if they if they do this, they kind of ruin their chances to to push back against the deal later. But we'll 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 get into that. Okay. Well, Hargeet, hello, welcome, <laughs> welcome to breaking news. Yeah. Right. Uh, are, are you surprised by this last ditch effort <sighs> by uh, Lena Khan uh, and her team? Considering that uh, she's in a bit of hot water, and by hell or by hand grenades, uh, she is going to she's going to keep fighting this. Obviously, she has backing from Senator Warren, who actually told her to continue this fight. Um, I just find it to be ridiculous. But 
What what do you? Th oh, how you doing, man? Welcome. Uh, I mean, like Hoke said, you can't account for crazy. Look, ultimately, unfortunately, this is all politics, and you can see it. it's coming from a politician, right? It's not even. It's blatant. Senator Warren is a politician telling a government agency to do something. They're supposed to be separate. There's not supposed to be any direction from government telling what the FTC should do. It's supposed to be a bipartisan, very clearly just looking at consumers and saying, we're just going to look at the industry and make sure nothing goes wrong, right? That's the FTC's job is not to be political, but this is 100% political. There's no case a federal judge appointed by your president told you you have no case. Right. And now you're going to go after that. Well, I want to see what the, the actual reason is, because you have to you can't introduce new evidence. Right. Right. So you have to basically say she's incompetent. She lied. She has a conflict of interest. She was bribed. I mean, you have to have something crazy to tell me why well, she had a clerical error of some sort. What error? Like they provided nothing. And she told them you provided nothing. And where I got information, it proved the opposite of what you said. Right. So what, what do you Hargy? want me to do, right? So Hargy? ultimately, this is just such crap. It <laughs> like, is. But whatever. Hargeet, I brought the receipts, but we'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, exactly. Right. I mean, like, so we'll, we'll see. I, I don't even think they're going to take it up. To be honest, it seems, seems such a waste of time. The Ninth Circuit would have to say there is the potential that our Ninth Circuit judge was so incompetent that we should break a deal of two companies looking to merge next week. That I, We'll see, but I just don't see that that's something they're going to do. Well, I mean, also, it's her own other judges, her peers, right? It's, she's a part of the Ninth Circuit. And, and to be fair, it's their job to, to be in appellate court as well and to say, it's possible our judge failed and we should look at the merits of it. But right. it's so thorough that I just don't see what you're going to well, come I, up I, with. I've read the a lot Ninth of it. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has <laughs> never, never once uh, overturned a, pol a preliminary injunction denial in a vertical merger. Yeah, and the question is, it. would they even be bother with going through with it? Would they actually take it up? And that's the question, right? So I don't know. We'll see. They, if they do, we'll see how long it goes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're gonna get, we're gonna get into it because, like I said, uh, this is a learning experience for me. Like I said, I come from uh, criminal law background, <laughs> not uh, business law uh, and governmental law. So I'm very interested to hear why this is a a, a lot to do about nothing uh, and why it's considered a hail mary. Because you know, hail marys can still get touchdowns. Uh, I, I'm I'm hoping that there's this is so that Judge Corley's and and I, and I read a lot of her things. I mean, she. Uh, destroyed the FTC's case uh, at, at every angle. If you, if you read it, it's so thoroughly written that I don't know how you would find anything wrong with what she said. Because remember, she went based on the evidence that was presented by the FTC. And ultimately, she said that they failed. They failed. Not, not she failed. <laughs> they failed to prove their case. And she is a federal judge, and she ruled on it. And, and, and are, are we are we not going to forget that Lena Khan's ideology is just take them to court, just yeah, sue them? Unfortunately, the, the you know the politics of this is just so annoying. It's gross, man. It's just not necessary, right? That she's coming in with the idea that any American business is just evil, and that if you're a big tech, you should do nothing. You should die. And it's like stop, just stop. Yeah. The market. Is showing you if I if Microsoft wanted to compete in, in, in smartphones again and they want to buy something, you're telling me they shouldn't be able to do that because they're a big company like that. This this whole mindset just needs to go away. Microsoft is literally the joke in platforms and on console gaming. They have very little market share in any part of the gaming industry. Why is this a problem? Yeah, I just don't see anything here. I, I, I don't even care if Call of Duty was shut down. If it became exclusive, it does not matter. The yeah. fact that Nintendo exists, thrives, and destroys its competition is proof enough you do not need that one game. It's a bunch of crap coming yeah. out of Jim Ryan, lion moron's mouth. And I don't know why the heck they latched onto. Well, I do know why. Because they just needed anything. Anything. Yeah. Just anything to say, oh, my God, big bad Microsoft is going to kill the world. I, I, this kind of stupidity, I, it's just so irritating that our government has become so ridiculously bad. It's political all the way through now. And it's just, this should not happen. Justice is supposed to be blind. This is not the way it's supposed to be. 
This is crap. Yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get into it, folks. Uh, like I said, we don't like politics on this show. Uh, politics is usually filthy, and this is another. This is a perfect example of filthy, <laughs> filthy politics. Yep. Uh, but it's gaming. It's it's the biggest deal in tech history. It is going to be a monster win uh, for Xbox gamers. Um, I think that we are going to see uh, a plethora of ABK titles d- dropped in uh, periodically. Uh, there was an uh, I I I I, I want to get the uh, precise info, but apparently uh, they went back in to fix uh, the multiplayer in many of the older Call of Duties. Uh, that kind of tells you that these things are probably coming to Xbox Game Pass, and they're going to have. Uh, you know, uh, lobbies that actually work, which is pretty, pretty substantial. Um, Mag, what's yes, going on? Sir. You, 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 you're obviously in Canada, so you get to see and laugh. Where's your popcorn? You get to see the stupidity yep. of the American yep. government and Lena mm-hmm. Khan just not. I, I, what I really can't wait to see is when there's literally nothing more for her to do. And I got to be honest with you, I cannot even see her finishing her tenure. Uh, based on the way she's the way she's behaving, mm. uh, because obviously she's hell bent on beating this deal, even though she did everything she could and lost and legitimately lost. And mm-hmm. it's still not good enough. How are you feeling, man? Good. morning. Oh, man. All right. Well, you know what? Listen, Canada, we have our own set of clowns up here, too, running the show. So don't worry. We're no strangers to it as well. If anybody in the chat from Canada knows, well, you know what I'm talking about. But anyways. I'm not going di- to dive into it uh, for my intro, but I just want to say hello to everybody. Say hello to the chat. Uh, I did want to say one thing about uh, OBM and, of course, uh, uh, Everborn uh, yapping on about uh, how they should walk away and uh, get Sega. I would agree with that because I'd be very pleased to have many 6 out of 10 IPs coming to Xbox Game Pass instead, oh, wow. of, uh, <clears throat> instead of the ABK games. Right, but anyways, you know, besides that... that, that. Shots fired right there, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. The deal hey, would have been done by now, Mag. Sonic that's Frontiers was a 6. I, I just that's, that's my hashtag for the night. Uh, anyways... Oh. Oh my 16, goodness. Sir. Game was <laughs> well, listen, like I said, I'm not going to get into all my points because I got a lot of them. Uh, and, I, and I've jo- I had to jot them all down because my brain was going in a million directions, especially with this new news, which, of course, it's just a, it's just a pony. It's a, well, no pun intended. It's a dog and pony show. But, uh, you know, uh, yes. the thing is, at the end of the day, they got no legs to stand on. It's just a waste of time and money. This is these are rats on a sinking ship. Uh, but you know what? Whatever. Like I said, we'll get into it when we get into it. But uh, yeah, that's I'm excited to be here. We got some things to talk about and uh, be interested to see where this uh, conversation goes. Well, look, let, let's talk about the breaking news, folks. Obviously, this is a big deal. Now, yesterday, I think everyone knows uh, that uh, there are a couple, a couple of big things happened yesterday uh, besides uh, Activision uh, and Blizzard potentially joining Microsoft. Uh, Twitter was super quiet which was really refreshing. A lot of the trolls that continued to make really, really bad takes on the ABK deal just vanished. Wasn't that just amazing? I mean, all of the trolls. I'm not going to mention anyone by names, but we even heard some people deleted their entire accounts Mm. over this this win for Microsoft. Uh, But all jokes aside, um, Bobby Kotek was interviewed on CNBC um, uh, regarding the uh, potential, folks, of the ABK appeal from uh, Lena Khan and the FTC. And he he said this, and I saw this literally like an hour ago, uh, I'd be surprised if they would waste taxpayer resources on something like that. I can't imagine the Ninth, uh, the ninth uh, um, Circuit would grant the stay. I would think that it would be highly unlikely, and it just wouldn't be productive. Um, look, uh, before we bring in Everborn, because he's obviously going to go ham on this because he does have a tremendous amount to say, uh, I do want to bring in uh, Hargeet. Hargeet, look, you said you already said some things, but I want you to, uh, to you know, to you know, drive the point home. Um, this is a Hail Mary at this point. Um, I, I, I'm like you. I, I, again, I don't know a lot about the Ninth District and how that, that type of law works. I come from a uh, criminal law background, which is fine. Uh, I do know common sense. Um, I I cannot see Hargeet, the ninth <laughs> district, picking this up. I I I, 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 hope I just can't. <laughs> yeah, I hope they just deny it. Uh, no, I I just read what they posted, and there's like nothing there. It, it literally has just we 
uh, here's There's a says. notice of appeal. Yeah, notice is, is hereby given that plaintiff FTC appeals to the United States Courts Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit of this uh, from this court's opinion dated July 10, 2023, and entered on the court's docket on July 11. Uh, wow. That's it. <laughs> that so there's, there's right. no reasoning. There, there's no reason. Like right. okay, but so I, guess, so I don't know if they need it, to provide one or not. <laughs> they they will, but again, um, they only have until eleven. 59 on friday which is basically two days and yep. they would have to go this isn't about the appeal right because it, and just by the way they're appealing to the ninth circuit court of appeals who uh already denied uh two of judge corley's uh appeals uh from the gamer lawsuit Remember when she dismissed it in the first place? The gamers tried to appeal. They said, okay, cool. We'll hear your case in December. Right? Then the same thing with the TRO. We're not, we're not going to... Uh, the, they tried to go to Judge Corley and said, can you join our case with the FTC? Judge Corley said no. And then they turned around, tried to appeal that. And the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals denied that. So... What is important here is not the appeal because the appeal becomes moot if the deal is consummated. Remember, they are appealing a ruling for preliminary injunction, which is only purpose is to stop the two companies from merging, right? If yep. the companies are merged, that ruling is basically the, the, the appeal is basically worthless. Yep. So the FTC with the, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. They can just say, we'll hear your case in October, and that's basically denying it, yep. right? What they would need to get is a temporary stay, and that they would have to secure that in, uh, again, two days. I am not of the opinion that Microsoft will even wait until Monday because technically they can close as of 12.01 on Saturday. Which who says they can't do that, right? Why why wait to Monday? Right. Yeah, the only you... thing left is the CMA piece, right? And sure. I, I'm but hoping do you risk that, it. I, I'm right? hoping because they just go ahead and do deal with it, right? That they, they because get you something can't do anything if 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 the temporary stay is 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 granted, right? That means the whole thing's held up for like six months until the appeals court has time to look at it, which would effectively kill the deal. The appeals court knows that, uh, and we'll get to why. There's a big hurdle that the FTC would have to clear, uh, and it would be the appeals court doing something they've never done. Um, instead of instead of gambling that, right, you close on Saturday at 12.01, unless there's some rule barring it that I don't know about. So Hogue or Florian, if you're listening, if there's any lawyers listening to us, I know we got like a thousand people here soon, come and tell me this. But I don't think there's any difference for them closing on Saturday versus closing on on Monday. And you can close over the CMA. You can't close over the U.S. So any minute you give them to get that, unless it's denied, and it very well could be denied between now and Friday. Right. Right? That will be the ink. So we will have to watch between now and Friday whether the temporary stay is granted. And again, when you get to me, boom, I will tell you all the hurdles they're going to have to pass. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it, folks, because obviously, like I like like uh, like Everborn said, uh, I, I I'm just a regular podcaster with a criminal law background. So all everybody has a law me. degree after this uh, last. I know, right? We might we went, we all might have one because, like I said, I, I've, I've learned so much from Everborn. I've learned so much from Post Up. I've learned so much from Hogue Law. And of course, Foss Patents, who I've been, everyone has been following. Um, but uh, so, so speaking I mean, of the criminal part of it, that does add a wrinkle. And the wrinkle is, as we mentioned earlier, as you mentioned earlier, Boom, is this contempt of Congress. That's no joke. Yes, that, that's no joke. And I don't know what she's thinking, because that whatever documents she's not giving them, they're going to put her in jail and they will go get them. Yes. That, it's government property. She does not have any. They went into President Trump's freaking house. And mm -hmm. raided that crap and got whatever they wanted. They are yeah. not going to stop for Lena Khan. They're going to get whatever they want. And to do this is just ultimate stupidity because they're going to get it anyway. And if you're going to go to jail to do something that, because look, she might have done something wrong, right? That's fair. 
but you can get a trial for that. In this case, you're just going to go to jail. That's it. Right. It's a minimum required. You go to jail. You have to go to, that's part of contempt of Congress. I don't know what she's thinking. She's a lawyer. She knows what this is. Why is she doing this? You have a better chance getting a trial than contempt of Congress. You are automatically in jail. That's just a stupid thing to do. Why are you doing this? But that brings an interesting point. Two people had been nominated as Republicans, and the, the, the Republican side of the Senate is very happy with them. And so they are going to fast track them into the FTC. If Lena Khan is in jail, guess what happens? They can revote and it'll be a stalemate. And guess where they end up? It's done. It's All this stuff deal. goes away. Unless, of course, one of the Democrats <laughs> will have backup now of the FTC. It doesn't it's matter. Straight. It's two and two, right? Oh, it doesn't really matter. So somebody okay. will assume the chair. Yeah, but I don't option. think we should talk about Lena Khan. And, and, and this whole thing is not like I. I don't. I don't. I don't think I've ever seen it. Like what you're gonna? Well, no. This is this is this is the political what? theater that it is, that it's is still crazy. It's so. It's look. I'll say this, uh, Hargeet. What we discussed and what you just talked about is so off the wall bonkers, right? <laughs> that it's something that you would potentially see in a film. Yes. Not in actual U.S. government. <laughs> what is over going on? a video game deal? Like it is. <laughs> It's crazy to me. It, it, it is. is. It's nuts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll get into the more of the uh, like the actual, you know, this 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 potential for uh, appellate court thing. I don't know that it's going to matter. I this is like happening at this point, and I don't like. I don't know what reason they're going to give. I I'm very interested in the reason they're going to give. I would love to see what they. Well, say I saw, you know what I saw, uh, <laughs> Hargeet, that people were running with is the fact that her son works for Microsoft. So there's a there there. there but here's they chose the thing. That judge. But see that they chose that judge. They you see and Microsoft that's the thing wanted about, to do it in DC. They did. They, they chose did. that right. judge. FTC they, chose her. Yeah, FTC. It's, went it's, in it, you can't turn around and change it. that and say, oh, you see what's happening? You did that. Yeah, yeah. You put See, yourself and, and, in that position. And I'm glad that we're talking about that because I, I do want to uh, kind of, uh, you know, wipe, a, wipe, wipe the windshield uh, of the mud that's on there so we can actually see. Uh, if you are in the camp where there is some sort of corruption, where you're going to accuse Judge Corley of having, uh, you know, Microsoft's uh, best interest because her son works there. First of all, day one of the case, she made that very apparent. OK, before anything was done and like Hargeet said, just like uh, uh, just like um, the mag said, Microsoft wanted to do this in Washington, D.C. And the FTC specifically picked Judge Corley. So they got what they wanted and they lost. And this temper tantrum that they're having in public is just. It's preposterous at best. Um, yeah. As I said, this is the friendliest thing they're going to have, and it yeah. still just went, oh, you know, the wrong way for them. Yeah. It, well, case. the evidence, uh, folks. Look, <laughs> now we're, we're going to get into video game talk because, as you can see, has ha, have I, how I painted this episode to be before this breaking news is the fact that Microsoft will have thirty-four AAA studios under XGS. And that, to me, folks, is just complete madness. I mean, it, it, and if you go down the list, there isn't a weak link. Now, you can say that it might be oh, about 343, three, but I don't know, 343, three, weakest link. Maybe. Go play some new, go, go play some Halo. Trust me, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, changes are coming. But it's 34 studios, and they're not even done yet. That to me is the most exciting point because, hmm. like I said, I know everyone's like Sega. I'm, I'm a Sega. I'm a Sega stand, folks. You know that I'm Dreamcast man number one. My favorite console, literally of all time. Like not to be confused with Dreamcast guy. No, no, no. We don't. We don't mention <laughs> him. That's again. Like, that's like mentioning Voldemort. Don't do it because the podcast is gonna crash or something. Please don't. <laughs> um. No, Dreamcast, the console, number one. Dreamcast guy, I'm not going to give you my opinion. I don't like doing that about other uh, content creators. I just am not a fan. I'll say it like that. Okay, so I do want to bring in Mag. Mag, look, uh, this is 
Yeah. I mean, this is this is like a TV. This is this is this is like a the soaps, bro. Like mm-hmm. I I can't believe what we are witnessing. And it's not like Microsoft got w- was given this for free. They had to fight tooth and claw, and they just brought a better case in every which way. And like I said, Judge Corley's decision, whether you agree with it or you don't, is out there publicly for you to read. And the, she, now, and again, I don't want to, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but everyone was telling me that in the write up. The FTC had so much wrong that she's like, I could keep going, but there's no need to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, at the end of the day, first of all, this appeal, uh, you know, when we started the show tonight, and some people are like, are you surprised by this? Are you surprised by this? No. And I don't think Microsoft was surprised by this either. I think they were. They, I, think, I think that judging by the way that they were, the characteristics of the way the FTC were acting during this entire pro, uh, proceeding is that they knew that this was going to get appealed no matter what. Right. This was the case from the beginning. And so they were ready for that, too. As ridiculous as it is and as what Hargeet had said at the beginning of the show, uh, new, you know, new, ev- new evidence would have to be presented of evidence that's already been presented. They would have to find a new angle. There is no other angle. There is no new evidence. There's nothing else. This is as, as childish as it's going to sound. This is as crybaby as it gets, basically, at this point. This is a. Uh, from someone looking from the outside in before everybody, you know, says whatever they want to say about me. Uh, I've been watching this for since 2016. We all know what happened in 2016, don't we? When it was 2020, four years later, the same people were still crying about the about about you know who wanting winning the presidency. It's four years. Give it up. Like you know what I mean? Like just let like you lost. Uh, you know what I mean? Whether you like it or not, that's how it goes in life. Sometimes this is literally mirroring the exact same thing. You have lost. You have lost thoroughly. The judge even said, just like you boom, uh, just like you said, boom, she has laid out that she could have kept going, but I mean, she doesn't need to receive, you know, for any of us old enough. Yeah, she could have written an encyclopedia Britannica about everything that was wrong with this situation. Let it go. You've lost. You are embarrassing your party at this point, point. and that's the other thing. I saw some other people in the chat saying they're embarrassed to be, uh, you know, to be part of this uh, part of that party because look, it can't be denied. It can't be denied. Look at what. Look at look at the. You know, I don't need to be, uh, you know, Clouseau to figure this out. Uh, 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 Senator Warren, she's a Democrat. Biden appointed her. He's a Democrat. Lena Khan is a Democrat. The two people, the two people that were basically almost forced out of the situation were Republican. What left? What was left? Just Democrats. Come on, guys. Let's not be foolish here. And what's happening? Once again, they lost and they're crying about it and they're going to lose again. And this is not a Republican versus Democrat thing. You know what I'm saying? This is Microsoft. It's got nothing to do with that. But but you could see that they're trying to pull that political side in and by banding together. But it's not working. It's silly. It's ridiculous. It's childish. I don't understand what the point of this is. I don't understand what they're trying to accomplish at this point with the fact that they're not able to present new evidence or anything else into this case. They basically have to appeal what's already been proven incorrect. That is going to be a gargantuan effort, which will not you beat Randall Thor. Sorry, I couldn't help it. I sure did. (laughs) Screw Rand. Yeah, Yeah, Rand. (laughs) Now it's Xbox One because Jez is Jez is on, and you know you're out. Anyways, um, here's the thing: when it came to this whole situation, if you want to go back to the beginning of this entire uh, situation, this entire case, you know the thing is, you know Lena Khan has these the, the ideology. You could almost even call her. I was talking about it with Mike Mollis yesterday. She is an ideal uh, ideologue activist at this yes, point, right? It's, it's the, ridiculous. It's it's, yeah. it's those extreme people. Hey, man, yeah. listen. Like I said, I'm a Canadian looking in, but there are extreme lefts, there are extreme rights. In this case, we're talking extreme left, right? Yep. So I'm not saying anybody's right or wrong. I'm just saying this is, these are the facts. And so she's an ideologue and an activist, and it's embarrassing. And you've seen how that's worked in Hollywood. You've seen how that's worked in video games. You've seen how that's worked across, you know what I mean, in all these social media aspects. It's ridiculous, right? And so the, the, the point is she did have, on, on an ideological level, she could have had a point Because there are things that I disagree about big tech, which I think are utterly ridiculous. For example, I think it's silly that if I am having a conversation with Everborn on a park bench, you know, and, uh, you know, I don't know, we're watching, we're feeding the pigeons or something. And I say, you know, Everborn, I need a new pair of blue jeans. I'm like, these ones are just not comfortable anymore. And you're like, all right, why don't you go buy them? All of a sudden I go on my phone and then on Facebook, Instagram, everywhere else, there's advertisements for blue jeans. 
right? Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like that they know everywhere that I am. I mean, sometimes that's okay because if you're trying to get out of a murder rap, you'd be like, you see, sir, you see, officer, I was at the gym. You know what I mean? But these are big tech things I do I not like. Hey, man, hey, it's a fact, right? Look at threads. Look at threads that just came out right now. You see what you need to uh, to give them in order to become a member of threads, this this new uh, Zuckerberg thing that they got yeah, going on. Yeah, I'm not a member. Like, no. to like, give them the same thing they already have from you because... Well, yeah, well, yeah, that's the thing. But, like, now they're even asking for medical records. If that's if that's true, I don't know if that's true or not because I'm not, I'm not going to get involved there. But anyways, the point is, these are all things that I actually disagree with as well. And so, you know what? If she had gone off after the right fight, she would she could have had a chance. Yeah. Right? But the problem is, you went after something that was actually trying to help the consumer yeah not be you know uh, not be again like anti uh, anti consumer this was something that was going to help this was something that's not going to be invasive into our lives this right. was not going to be something that was going to listen to us sleep you know what i mean or watch us when we're watching tv or doing whatever we're up to okay this was something that was just on a fundamental level, something that was supposed to help the consumer. And what did she do? Instead of going after the things that I had just mentioned, she goes after the thing that's actually trying to help consumers save dollars, especially in this political and and, uh, and economic climate. Uh, and it's not just America. It's all over the world. Are you insane? Yeah. It's like yeah. you went to jail and they're like, all right, you got to, you know, you got to sharpen up your toothbrush and you got to take out the big guy. And then she goes after the, the mob boss. And like, not that big guy. Another big guy, you clown. Like, like you're picking the wrong fight. That's what I'm getting at. You're picking the wrong fight. And that's what's been happening from day one. And the fact that this is being appealed. First of all, I don't even think it's going to make it. There. I think they're just splashing a headline here. I don't even think it's going to get this far, to be quite honest. Does anybody I, I actually agree. think that they're I actually going to go through with this? Or do you think this is just political posturing at this point? I, I think they're going to try, but I don't think the Ninth District Court is going what? to even pay her any attention. They, this well, is not even going to get tag me in. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm We're setting it up, so knock it out of the park, dude. Go ahead. Well, well, let, let, let's bring in one bad mother. But before we do that, I got to catch up with Super Chats. Uh, first of all, uh, let me just do this because yesterday, or actually Friday, and I and I offered my apologies to him, and he was, of course, a gentleman about it. I had missed a Super Chat, and I, and I get real bothered, folks, by that. That's why today, uh, yesterday, if you didn't know, uh, we broke records. We had 1,800-plus people in the chat, yes. which is record-breaking. Uh, we are now officially 24 subs away from 13K. So thank you for any, any new subs. And if you want to help get 13K live on the air, I'd appreciate it. Uh, we got 83 Super Chats yesterday. I could not wow. obviously read them. Uh, so what I did today is, and I'm not going to do this very often because I nearly lost my voice. I did a solo <laughs> show today just reading the super chats and answering the the uh, the chat live chats questions uh it was a lot of fun it went a lot better than i thought because i've never really done that before at least for that long it went 90 minutes and you know it's it's a lot uh but i missed true iron legs uh super chat of five dollars and i do want to just make sure that i do read that live on the air uh he actually had said i don't know if it's just me but who would like to see Giants software get acquired by Xbox after the list uh, getting out there, bring on Farming Simulator. I, I think, for, again, it's not for me, per se, True Iron Leg, but it, it I mean, it would be for a lot of people. People would dig in. I think that's one of those kinds of studios that would be great uh, for Microsoft. But uh, Tom from Toonami drops a very generous $5 super chat and says, the FTC is appealing Microsoft. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? That is hilarious. Uh, we have um, Hadari Mac. Uh, welcome, Hadari. He drops a very generous $5 super chat and says, between Team Phil Spencer and Team Jim Ryan, I wonder who, is, <laughs> who has been drinking more. Yeah, I mentioned that on today's stream. Um, I don't think Phil's drinking, but I could tell you this this is this is aged Phil a bit. Like this, this has really put some years on him. You can tell like he's tired. Uh, and I can't wait for everyone to that's why I don't think you're gonna get any acquisition talk for quite some time. And I think we all need a break from it. We just want to talk about games. Uh but THX Right after uh, Sega, but yes. <laughs> okay. THX eleven thirty-eight drops a very generous two dollar super chat and says Sony has Spider-Man, Microsoft. Has a Hulk with ABK? Uh, I would love a Hulk game. I would love them to remake Ultimate Destruction, which was freaking awesome. If you remember that, 
Remember, I'm old. Uh, Swagger4000 drops a very generous $2 super chat and says, no one's talking about the Call of Duty engine. Is there new news or something? I Maybe I missed it, but we'll get to it eventually. Probably by Friday. Uh, Pluga Bravo drops a very generous $5 super chat. And he takes it. A, I love you, brother. And I appreciate the generosity. This, this is a bit of a personal dig. I'll read it. I don't agree with it. He says, Lena Khan doesn't have a husband because she looks like she has nothing better to do. No, I don't want to do that. Yeah, Please we don't. We don't. We want. We don't, like, don't want to do that here. Yeah, she. She. We don't look, need to do the personal attacks. You can talk about the FTC being yeah. wrong and dumb. Yeah. Please don't do the personal attacks. Yeah. It, First it, of all, it, it I agree. Nothing to to to, to The anybody. thing is this. On paper, folks, Lena Khan's ideology to prot- supposedly protect consumers from big tech running rampant is fair and sound okay but that's only on paper because her real ideology is that all tech big tech is bad which is just it's not good that that's just not a good way of thinking not every this this is why i always tell people don't throw races creed color sexual orientations under umbrella you 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 can't do that if you do that you're just dumb not everyone's the same. Not everyone has things the same. Not everyone acts the same. What she is trying to do is paint big tech across the board as one broad stroke being bad. That is, that's not good. I don't think she deserves to be in a position that she's in. And I'm going to tell you why. Because remember, she's coming from being a professor. And then not that there's anything wrong with that. But this is also the same woman that wrote a thesis that Amazon prices were too cheap. That should that should that should say it all. Well, I don't understand. I've actually heard people say the same thing about Walmart, and I just think that if you're just crazy, I, I don't understand that. But whatever. Um, let's get to uh, X double X double, Wolverine double X. Just a two dollars super chat and says the FTC is on a wild goose chase. I, in, indeed, they are. Uh, Dragon Blood Eye, welcome to the program, brother. Uh, he drops a very generous two dollars super chat, and he's also the FTC has filed an appeal just now. Oh, we have a new channel member, P1553D. Thank you for becoming a channel member. We super appreciate that over here. Spartan661 drops a $2 super chat and says, uh, I'm sure Microsoft knows uh, all notary is open on Saturday. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Chubby Big Toe, welcome to the program, brother. He drops a very generous $2 super chat and says, here we go with politics. Stop the MAGA crap. Dude, no one's what what is you with the you see what you see how it goes? The you say something stuff. and all of like, a sudden I, I you're you're an extremist, and then you I say something get, on the other dude, side, I, you're an extremist. I don't I get it. I appreciate the generosity, brother, but you, this is like the third time you who's 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 a part of the I'm not a part of that. I don't think anyone here is. I just we, listen, no. yes, politics suck, but this is w- gaming and politics merged. Our chocolate is mixed with the peanut butter. Maybe you don't like chocolate, maybe you don't like peanut butter. But unfortunately, we have to eat this shit sandwich because this is what's been served. Um, RC Polygons. That's a new name I haven't seen. RC, welcome to the program and thank you for the generosity he drops. A $5 super chat and says, as, as a Democrat, I do agree with not allowing big companies to hurt the people. I feel embarrassed. Stopping big tech is great. This isn't the right fight. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So, uh, one bad mother. Let, let's let's get your take on this frivolous shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, definitely had some thoughts in there. And and uh, Everborn, I'm going to be quick because I know uh, you got a lot of good stuff to go over. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hearing that. But you know, I, I really quickly just wanted to just jump on, uh, maybe put a little bit of a fire hose on some of the political talk. I, you know, I I, I kind of came in here, you know, uh, definitely looking forward to talking about you know, what ABK is going to mean for... Oh, we're going to get you know, to that. Don't trust yeah, absolutely. We're going to get so, to it, yeah. But a, a couple of things, I, I'll just say a few notes on this because, um, you know, like our system is something of checks and balances, right? Um, and obviously, you know, there's always going to be difference in, differences in philosophies. Uh, I'm sure there's differences. If we all sat down and did a political show, I'm sure there's going to be differences in philosophies between us. Uh, right. I think it's healthy. I think discussion debate is healthy. Um, and our system is like built on that, those different sides kind of keeping each other with checks and balances and things like that. So just want to, you know, kind of set the table with that. 
um, to kind of get into my next point, which is, you know, like, like this, I don't think this is really, yes, you know, the left is definitely more regulation, right is less regulation, whatever, but I don't really think this is necessarily a left versus right issue. This is more about like a, a people that kind of respect the process. Uh, Judge versus, Corley was also appointed by Biden. Yeah, she was also appointed by Biden, a California Democrat. Microsoft is socially liberal. Uh, you know, like this is not necessarily a, 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 a totally a right versus left thing. And in fact, if you go to the EU, who uh, who actually were the first to prove this deal out of the big, out of the big, uh, you know, area territories, uh, they are probably, when it comes to regulation, when it comes to uh, where they're at in that, like generally they're further, they're, they're, they're much, they're, they're a lot stricter over there than they are generally in the UK and generally in the U S. So what you're seeing, I think in the U S and in the UK is, you know, this, this basic, um, this sort of overcorrection towards, you know, a lot of the big companies, uh, you know, we've heard a lot about that and I do agree just like, uh, just like Mag said, you know, I think a lot of people uh, that even that the ones that disagree with this process, you know, do think that big tech does need oversight. They do need regulation. There is a lot of stuff going on. And so I don't necessarily have any problem with, with I'm losing my voice. Sorry. Um, must be the smoke out here in Michigan. <laughs> sorry. But yeah. Yeah. Sorry. You Canadian. <laughs> you're giving me a smoker's uh, voice. You're starting to sound like the guy from uh, The Simpsons. <laughs> Would you like fries with that, sir? <laughs> Sorry. Like, what was his name? The Brady on the Brady Bunch. But anyways, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like that, you know, even the people that agree with that as somebody who actually and I'll just speak for myself, I do think there needs to be some of that. But the problem I see is actually, you know, what is happening here with with Lena Khan and with the way the FTC is handling it is actually bad for people like me that actually do want to see, you know, some oversight and some scrutiny and some, you know, pushback and some balance checks and balances there, because what's going to end up happening is you end up, basically, you're just giving more ammo to the people that to say, well, we need none of it. Right. Or you, you kind of, you, you kind of ruin that conversation a little bit because they are turning this at a little bit into a clown show. And that's not just me, like as a, you know, somebody prefers playing an Xbox who uh, does want this deal to close for reasons um, saying that that's even from, you know, analysts who have probably don't even game. You know, if you go listen to some of the analysts out there, they didn't think the FTC had a much of, they thought they had an uphill battle to, to begin with. They thought the case that they made was really not that good. Uh, they don't think there's really much basis for an appeal um, but they admit that what the FTC is trying to do right now is just make the process as messy and as uncomfortable as possible so that other, you know, big companies think twice about trying to acquire. And the problem with that is that you're going to have in the future, some overcorrection, and then you'll have, you know, like situations we've had in the past where you have no regulation re leading to problems. So I always believe that there should be, there's, there's always a balance in these things. So I don't like people, you know, making this about just politics and in, in the, uh, the chat and everything else. I, I do think it, it, there is, you know, I think politics is what our country, you know, is built on. It's built on differences of opinions and philosophies, but we do have a process. And I think right now, um, all, all this is, is just another attempt to messy the process. I listening again to the analysts who kind of reviewed Corley's decision. They don't see really this appeal going anywhere or having, uh, or before this appeal was, was known, like they, they didn't see really any sort of basis or hook or way in on an appeal. So I think what they're doing right now is just something to, Again, make make it uncomfortable. Make other companies kind of think twice about maybe trying to do something now. Because if you do, we're gonna dig up an email from, you know, four years ago that had nothing to do with this, <laughs> you know, from a mid level executive and make it and try to embarrass you because that's really what they have going for them for the anti consolidation. So, um, just kind of throwing that out there. Now, I'm going to try to drink some water and I'm going to let Everborn uh, talk about. <laughs> 
this yeah, so, situation. Absolutely, brother. Go 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 uh, go refresh yourself. Get make sure it's a nice cold drink because that that usually helps. Uh, but uh, everyone saga. Let, 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 this is what we've been waiting for, folks. Uh, I again, I talk with everyone hey. every day. This is uh, this is this is going to be very uh, interesting stuff. Why is this a much to do about nothing? <laughs> okay, um, I would use the terms very difficult, and it it. It's uh, interesting that you're driving uphill in Forza right now because that is what um, <laughs> the FTC is going to have to do. So before I get started, because I want to read uh, some of the ruling, which is what is going to be appealed, and, and then we can talk about – you'll just see automatically why it's going to be very difficult for them to go through this. So, But before I do that, I want to read something from Foss Patents. We are a friend of the uh, – show and the community and, and and whatnot very informative throughout this process so uh he called this seven hours ago and this is exactly what he said right i'm just reading one of his tweets timing this was this was this was from uh one o'clock in the afternoon right or 12 something in the afternoon uh i believe practically uh I believe the FTC would practically practically have to file today, though potentially very late. Voila, seven o'clock they file. Um, Microsoft and Activision would have a chance to oppose the motion. The motions panel uh, of the appeals court needs to consider, but unless there's an emergency injunction in place by the end of Friday, the deal may just close. That's the FTC's problem. That's what we talked about earlier. They'd right. have to do all this in the next two days. So uh, there should be public versions of those filings. And he says he'll comment, but he's probably asleep now because he's in Germany, which is like five hours ahead, which means it is one something in the morning there. Uh, okay, this is the good stuff. Uh, FTC needs to convince the appeals court that there were multiple issue, major issues with Judge Corley's decision. One of those issues wouldn't be enough. The standards of review are de novo for legal questions, substantial evidence uh, for factual findings, and abuse of discretion of on the balance of equities. De novo means zero deference, but Judge Corley applied the law in a way that is very hard to attack. Wouldn't be surprised to see the FTC try nonetheless to make some claims of legal errors substantial evidence means the ftc would have to convince the appeals court that the given factual findings lack substantial support in the record judge corley obviously ensured that everything she found was backed up by facts that abuse uh, of discretion is a very high hurdle as judge corley explains quite well why even if the ftc had and it does not a reasonable likelihood of success on the merits, it wouldn't be entitled to an injunction and should just carry on with its in-house adjudicative proceeding. Um, the FTC will argue that it should just get an emergency block for a few weeks during the period of, uh, the appeals court would uh, then make it the next decision on the block that could last a few months. But at that point, any block would potentially be a deal killer. The deal is ready for closing uh, as far as the U.S. situation is concerned. And the U.K. situation will be solved, it seems. And the FTC itself waited until June to seek an injunction in the federal court, though it could have brought uh, its case and complaint in December in the federal court to begin with. All right. That's our preamble. But I say that to say Florian, as much flack as he gets, literally called it like he was like he was uh, the Swami, right? Like he was Johnny Carson, right? You you gray beards know who the Swami is. Yeah, right? there's gonna be people in the chat like who's Johnny Carson? Right. Okay. You, you know so, if you know. <laughs> um so yes, we're old enough. <laughs> I knew Magnu. <laughs> All right, so now I, I just want to read some things that they're going to have to get over. And when you hear this uh, chat and panel, you're going to lose your mind. Because when I read this, I was like, this can't be true. Did you know that, um, let's see. Okay, listen to this. This is from Judge Corley's ruling, and they're going to have to get over this, right? Uh, the FTC also appears to contend it only need 
it only need it needs only show the combined firm would have a greater ability and incentive to foreclose Call of Duty from its rivals and an independent Activision um, from its rivals and an independent Activision. This assertion, however, ignores Section 7, which forbids mergers that may substantially lessen competition. It is not enough for a merge that a merger might lessen competition. The FTC must also show that it will probably it, it will probably substantially lessen competition. That that the combined firm has more of an incentive than an independent Activision says nothing about whether the combination will substantially lessen competition, right? By requiring uh that the, that the defendant proved that the divestiture would preserve exactly the same level of competition that existed before the merger, the government's proposed standard would effectively erase the word substantially from Section 7. Translation, what the FTC is trying to do is change the law via court decisions and precedent. I was right? shocked. They're trying to get <laughs> rulings that will change the law without going to the through the process which is for congress right. to do that right so but it gets better that that's not even the fun part ladies and gentlemen did <laughs> you know that the ftc wants judge corley and the court this is what they're going to appeal on they're using the wrong precedent they're using um dc precedent when they should be using this is what, by the way Okay, let me back up a little bit. You know how we said that the FTC wanted to go in to California, right? They want they specifically requested Judge Corley, right? Because they thought that she would use the precedent of um the the precedent from a case in their district, in the district of Northern California, right? Here's the problem with that. Uh, Judge Corley used precedents from Washington, D.C., right? The D.C. Circuit Court. Did you know that the D.C. Court Circuit Court overrules? It is the second highest court in the land behind the Supreme Court. So she used the court that superseded the, 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 the court that the, the district that the FTC won. But it gets better. They used as a as a precedent for whether uh, the contracts with Nintendo and Nvidia should be uh, relevant. They used their own decision in their own administrative court to say that that decision gives gives Judge Corley a federal uh, judge that 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 court should tell the federal court what to do. Are you guys following me so far? They're yes. using their own decision from the Illumina Grail case to say this is why the court should not look at this, right? How does that work? You, 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 you are a lower court, and you want the federal court to use precedent from your court, right? So, but it gets better, right? Judge Corley also talks about how and, and, and the entire 53-page uh, ruling shows this. She says, I don't agree with your market definition, but even if your market definition was correct, you would still lose in court, right? And, and, and the reason why is, and, and remember this long exchange that um, Beth Wilkinson's, which is Microsoft's lawyers, and then the judge got frustrated with Dr. Lee with his conversion model and his 20% conversion model, right? So um, she breaks down why their 20% conversion model is literally based on nothing, right? And even when she pressed them to put the facts in their final conclusion uh, of law and their and their their finding their final fact findings and conclusions of law, they still did not come up with any justification for the 20% other than they made it up. And they base it on a survey that Microsoft did, but Microsoft survey, if you were following that, says mm -hmm. that Microsoft would, would lose money by making it uh, exclusive, right? right? And there was no, and you guys will remember me saying this, there was literally no quantitative analysis on 
not only gaming subscriptions, but also the cloud market. So what would be the effects of Call of Duty being in a cloud um in a, in a in a in a uh in a street in a cloud streaming service or what would be the anti-competitive effects if it were in a subscription service there was none done right we have dr lee's model even if you want to take it right and i'm gonna the judge corley also points out um that his entire analysis is based off of gen 8 um Gen yeah, uh, data, PlayStation right? 4 versus here's Xbox the problem. One. We're dumb. Here's the Just problem. Ridiculous. The reason the FTC tells you you shouldn't count the Switch is because it is not a Gen 9 console. So wait a minute. Shouldn't your Gen 8 analysis have included the Switch? Probably. Right? Yeah, it, it's so, 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 so full. again, yeah. all these things are broken down. And at every point, she says... I don't agree with your market definition, but let's do the thought experiment. Let's do your let, let's um let's use your market definition and let me show you how you would still fail. Yeah, now, it was have, pretty thorough. And and, and, and right. just to kind of like piggyback on that uh Everborn because like, I was I did listen to Hogue's entire podcast today and uh you know, and he's he's always been one to kind of call a spade a spade when it comes to looking at line by line. It, like from his from his analysis, he thought he thought it was a complete it was a complete annihilation, basically. Like there was really, uh, yeah. But just, just, just threw that in there. But yeah, keep going. everyone, even better with, with Lee's full. Even if you went with his thing, Xbox is still losing. Yes. Even with all that, it doesn't well, matter. Xbox is still losing. And like, that was the, that was the oddest thing about this. <laughs> well, that was the oddest thing about the it whole was. the whole entire thing. It's like, like again, you know, I'm protect consumers absolutely and and bring it there if you know obviously you know you there's probably some some arguments you can make on the consumer <laughs> end but the uh the fact that the like the the stock the the lee's model um it's like well okay even if everything he said is true prove it like the, that is you're still talking about a very competitive market, right? Very fragmented. No, no, very but competitive. Even, even if everything they said is true, even if you take their market definition, they're by their own by their own expert, right? Their own expert made up the 20% number. And by the way, Judge Corley points out if you change yeah. that number to 17.5%, Microsoft loses money. So you have to explain what analysis was done to come up with the 20% yep. input. Yep. And by the way, Dr. This, again, this is all what, what judge Corley saying. It happens to be what I was saying this whole time, but it's nice to have a federal judge back you up. Right. <laughs> um, even if um, you, you want to, you want to say um, it's 20%, right. Have you done the analysis to say, uh, this 20% that you're saying, what percentage of them are hardcore Call of Duty players? Because right. they never even did the analysis to say, did do these people play Call of Duty more than, than 100 hours a year or 20 hours a year or are they even five hours a year? Yeah. Right? And so you're not going to tell a court that someone's going to play it, that someone buys a game, barely plays it, but they're going to move away from God of War and Horizon and Spider-Man for this game. By the way, their analysis also does not take into account releases from, um, like exclusive releases from the PlayStation, which means, d does your model say that um, players will have to leave the next God of War? And there's an exclusive release on the PlayStation. Will that weigh against your conversion rate? None of that was done. Well, and, right? and, and, and Everborn, just to, just to just, I, sorry to this, but some supporting evidence to that because I talked to an EA developer, uh, you know, has been there for a long time, a, a while back, and the the feedback was is like EA even figured out themselves that you know even being on PC where things are a click away, people will they'll switch games before they'll switch an ecosystem. Exactly, there are and, substitutes. And, right. <laughs> well, and that well, and the thing that that in the and the other part of it, and I guess this is going to kind of build into what you're kind of talking about, but I I think don't. If you're trying to block a $69 billion deal, deal this big, you should, you better come up. Like, I know I do data and analytics. Uh, I know, like, I got to come up with something better than a very generic, a general hypothesis and do the math on that. 
you've got to prove that out and then you got to control for different elements well, and like you're talking about the reason they didn't is because if they would have gone to that level if they would have done the surveys and they would have gone to that level which they could have they had the you know you could you could you, you could have they had surveys. telemetry they had access to telemetry data yeah. and they didn't use it they didn't by use the it way because it would have proven them wrong and that's that, that's it way, and at the end yeah Yep. Yep. Judge Corley also points out, <clears throat> you remember uh, the, the other, so you had um, uh, Dr. Bailey who used the telemetry data, yep. but you had the other expert from Microsoft. Carlton, remember how everyone Dr. thought Carlton. he did terribly? If you read the ruling, Judge Corley points out that at no point ha did the FTC or Dr. Lee, even on cross-examination or their final findings of fact, dispute anything he said so judge corley says his uh the, his that expert that that debunked um uh dr lee's uh um model his his testimony literally goes unscathed that's written in the ruling yep. so again but the ruling is written in a way that if you are going to appeal it you have to say well we got market definition right and she got market definition wrong but that would be fine if George Corley didn't go around and say, let me give you be the benefit of the doubt and show you why you're still wrong, right? And if you read the whole ruling, she tells them why their market definition is wrong. She tells them why uh, their lead witness, she points out how their lead witness, Jim Ryan, who, and they heavily rely on his testimony, even he says this deal won't be a problem. So she actually, <laughs> that smoking gun email, that he sent to his boss and told, and when he talked to the fidelity investors, that that's the smoking gun for her, right? And and she points out that they are there to protect competition and not competitors. Do you want me to read some more of this? Because I could keep going. And well, these are the facts that the FTC will have to overcome in that's order exactly it. for the nice yes. circuit court of appeals yeah. to grant their emergency stay. So again, we can say that this is a huge deal. But can the FTC overturn those facts? They can't even tie their shoelaces. Are you kidding? <laughs> you see how they were eviscerated in court? And then, of course... Uh, Wait, let me, let me just read one thing. It's one sentence, and I'm sorry okay. to keep going. But That's this okay. is the, the point that I was making earlier about them using their own. Okay, this is from Judge Corley's ruling. The FTC disputes this uh, written offer has any relevance to its prima facie burden. It contends that Microsoft's bindings offer a proposed remedy that may not be considered until the remedy phase. That is after a, seven se a Section 7 liability finding. As support, it again relies on its own 2023 Illumina decision. Wait a minute. You're saying that you don't have to look at these contracts and your reasoning for it is because you didn't look at them in your own case, which your own judge threw out? It's, it's preposterous. Yeah, But it's... in their court, they can overrule their own judge, so they just make the rules. So we make the rules, and now a federal court has to go by it, and you want the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, who has never in its history overturned a PI denial on a vertical merger. Look it up. If you think that I'm lying, you can Google this. Go ask Chat GPT. <laughs> yeah, no, They've no. It, never it's... done it. And you want them to do it here by Friday at 1159? <laughs> so yeah, if it's... I'm Microsoft, I'm closing 1201 Saturday because yeah. I'm tired of it. I'm going <laughs> to add a little bit of thing here. Just uh, if I'm reading this correctly, the, the three um, judges here, two are Republican, one is Democrat. Just pointing that out. <laughs> Just pointing that out. <laughs> okay. Well, you know look. On that note, I think I'm good. I don't even have to go anymore. <laughs> well, look, look, at the end of the day, folks, this is just another bump in the road. Uh, now, now, what I really want to do is, first of all, I want to read uh, Dark Winters, who drops a very generous $10 super chat and says, imagine asking for the case to be in L.A., getting the judge you wanted, and then when you lose, blame the judge. Utter yeah. ridiculousness. <laughs> yep. I mean, that's it, it's a thousand percent. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, but look, this is going to be done in all due time. We Two more days, this thing is probably done. They, and, and I agree with uh, everyone. I think you hear 12.01, they, they signed a deal. And if they sign a deal, it's, it's, it's too late, Luther. You, you, you can't do anything. But, you know, Mag, I, I want to start yes. with you first. Because the way I painted this show to be before, obviously, is to celebrate what is coming to Xbox. 
they are going to have 34 studios, 34 AAA banger uh, uh, you know, uh, making studios that are going to offer up potentially. You know, I know Mike and Phil has been very, very uh, stout about how they want, they want, and, they, and he sees it the cadence of one major AAA release per quarter, right? Mm-hmm. But when you consider the amount of games, uh, the amount of studios that are making games that we know about and a lot that we don't know about, plus outside studios who are making games for them, it does seem like your Xbox Game Pass subscription, even though it's going up two bucks in some regions, uh, maybe a little more for you, uh, yep. in Canada, uh, is going to be worth it. It, it, it. Again, things take time. We understand, you know, for everyone, not every game is a winner. Not every game is for every gamer. I say that all the time. But when you look at what is coming based on this deal, I, I think that if you're not already subscribed to Xbox Game Pass, I, I think that the minute Starfield drops, and that's going to be the one, that is going to be the, the the drop in the bucket that really does eventually have such an overfill that it's going to be a flood uh, of, of content. Uh, and you you're no, you're no longer, and I go to you first because you're no longer an Xbox yep. Game Pass subscriber because you at the moment no, you yep. it just was not beneficial for you financially. He's waiting for the deal to close and the money, and that's a, you're perfectly you're, you're yep. Nice, brother. You're I, well, I was going several months without playing anything, and I was just like, you know what. I'll wait till the other stuff comes. That was all it was. Like any, anybody who misconstrued what I was doing, and I'm like, listen, when the when the when those Starfields and when those Forzas and when that Senuas come and all that other stuff, then I'll go back to it. But until then, I was getting mid games at best, like your like your, like your Atomic Hearts and your Wo Longs. I don't like people like them. That's fine. You can like whatever you like. But I'm just saying, I didn't like those games, and I was wasting my time. I'm like, why am I subscribed to this if I'm not using it until those big bangers come? So I'm just waiting for that. So, so oh, yeah. what, what I really, what I want to laser yep. focus on is sure. the potential of what is coming to the service and the 34 yes. studios out of what's, what's coming of the new studios, which particular one like jumps off the page for you? Well, first things first, uh, we're going to have to look at the call of duty studios first, because they're the ones who are going to be producing consistently right those are the ones that are going to be producing every single year. When you look at like a blizzard, for example, people are like, oh, blizzard. And I'm like, yeah, but it takes them 10 years to release a Diablo game, right? So, and they just released wrong. Diablo 4. So, yeah. you're not going to see a Diablo 5 until the next gen console. So, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm sure they're going to have other games in between there, but I mean, like to keep those things like as something to be excited for, that's not that's not something to get excited for like for a Diablo 5. It's going to take so long. Like I said, it's going to be another it's going to be another console generation by the time those come out. Same thing with Fallout 5, same thing with Elder Elder Scrolls 6. But what are we going to do? We got to look at the interim. We have to look at what they showed at the game uh, at the game showcase. Those are the games coming out from the studios that they currently have. What we are going to look at, we have to look at the Call of Duties. Uh, something that they could do also to buy what they need to do, especially with the backlog. And this is something I talked about it with Colt, uh, is that you have to look at the catalog that ABK brings with them. And that is the key to all that because what they can do is not only revive old IP, what they could do is and I mean like 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 remake old IP like let's say you know like a new Crash or a new Tony Hawk or a new Rock Band or whatever a new Guitar Hero uh, those things you could re- we could revive all those um, you know those those different um, IPs but here's the thing what you can do is that you could take a lot of their legacy titles and you could turn them into a celebration of the entire series which is something that Phil was always a fan of he talked about that with about game preservation and things like that right i could see him uh, putting together a project very much like the halo chief Ma- uh, or H- halo chief <laughs> halo the master chief collection where what they did is they took every single halo map what was it like 110 maps or whatever it was yeah. or 100 maps and then they put it into one celebratory package yeah okay there were some bumps in the road at the beginning that's just semantics but when we talk about what the the idea was a great idea right and so why not and you know and obm was talking about it earlier in the show actually i believe when he's saying that they're you know they're looking at like uh, eventually maybe trying to fix up all those old maps right that's something that they could launch in Game Pass. Can you imagine how incredible that would be? Like maybe let's say next year they launch an entire pack of like let's say a hundred maps across all the different games of Call of Duty from like I don't know from uh, from uh, Call of Duty Four and on, and it would just be magnificent, right? You could do things like that. That could buy the studios time for when they're working on new IPs. They splinter off, 
so that they don't have to release a Call of Duty every single year. So let, let's say every two years, so you have two studios working on uh, Call of Duty or three studios working on that instead of like seven. Have those other four studios working on new IPs. While you're doing all that, take all the legacy items, be able to uh, put them in a new package, put them into Game Pass. you got all kinds of engagement there. You get even more engagement as more people subscribe. Uh, that's the kind of thing that they could buy time with. Now, on top of that, start throwing in packages of all the Call of Duty. Start throwing in packages of like four or five different zombie modes at a time into, call, into a Game Pass, things like that. It would be magnificent. Have whole subsections, zombie sections, you know, multiplayer sections, campaign sections, do all these things and do it for the different IPs as well. I mean, also, don't forget, you're also going to be, I mean, I know it's already free to play or whatever, but you got your Overwatch crowd and everything else. That will also expose a lot of people who are not playing Overwatch right now, it, you know, who are already in there going, hey, what's this? You know, and then check things out like that. Like these are exciting times of, of things that they can move forward. They have a lot of material to work with is what I'm getting at. So while they're working, and we can only speculate what those new IPs would be or anything that they're going to revive, while they're working on that, they can buy themselves a two-year cushion at least for the existing IP from their back catalog and from their from you know from their existing IP now and be able to repackage it and put it in the Game Pass and expose it to more gamers. So that's an exciting thing. So that buys that, and that actually in turn even helps the Xbox Game Studios. So when the Xbox Game Studios or Bethesda start running a little bit behind on what they're working on, they still have that huge back catalog that they could slowly release in the Game Pass that'll you know drum up enough interest in 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 the service where people keep going in there and they're like all right we bought enough time another six months for this we're going to drop another 10 games here from the back catalog into here we're going to do this and that and that's what i'm really interested to see and that's something that they could work on fairly quickly because once the deal goes through a lot of those games they could just you know they could put a you know they could put a fresh coat of paint on it or not even at all maybe just uh you know up the res up the uh, the frame rates things like that and uh, you know clean them up a bit those can be worked on fairly quickly so i'm interested to see where that's going so that that's that, that and like I said, for me, that could happen within the first six months. Yeah. Right. That's what's that's that's what we're going to see first. You know, I, I know some people are like, oh, new Tony Hawk. Okay, great. You're not still not gonna see it for another three years, guys. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not unless they're already um, unless working they on were it or, unless a lot. Of, yeah, you see, but <laughs> the one thing that we can say is that we don't know what we they don't know we have in development. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, there's, Blizzard there's, has a lot. Right. Yeah, Blizzard has a lot. Uh, so there's, there's, and by the way, speaking of Blizzard, Mike Yabarra just commented on this uh, <laughs> announcement of the uh, potential uh, uh, situation with uh, with the FTC. He says simply, "Your tax dollars at work." Oh wow! Uh, you you see what it's like when you play for the home team, unlike uh, Mister. No, Mr. no, Ketchup? no, no. Take take it easy. Take take it easy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh oh and also uh this is this Jer jeremy penter uh acg i think everyone knows that's man he just yes. crossed over a million subscribers yep, congratulations Barry. to that dude works so hard and he is a gentle giant like uh, i haven't had a chance to have him on the show every time he was supposed to come on something happened where our schedules wouldn't mix he promises he will eventually make an appearance i'm looking forward to it i love jeremy he's a great guy this is what this is what he said, folks, and this is even this is even worse than um, than what Mike Yabara said. Oh yeah, um, he says this, guys. I think most agree that the FTC seems to lack the talent to do this. It would be a good idea to replace the entire team with perhaps monkeys or maybe <laughs> meerkats. Uh, if you ever watch a nature video, meerkats seem to pretty uh, pre seem pretty smart. Something that can't be said about the initial FTC legal team. <laughs> And that's a pretty yeah, that's and that's a pretty big influencer to say something like that. That is yikes is, yeah, is really what that embarrassing. is. Uh yeah. So uh all right. So uh Mag, anything else you want to add, brother? No, I'm just I, like I said, I am just excited. Uh, we like I said, we can only speculate what those new IPs could possibly be because they're not they haven't announced anything, right? So right. when they get their stuff together, let's say possibly by the next i can't say e3 because e3 is canceled but e3 season they may right. have something that they'd be able to piece together and say hey listen this is what's we're, this is what we're working on you know and then then like i said in the interim in that year and then of course into the following year you're going to get a new call of duty anyway probably two of them one this year and then one next year and then that's when you start releasing the back catalog stuff you start releasing the legacy titles you start releasing the compilations of let's say all the tony hawks or whatever right 
That's interesting to me because then, you know, that's that will also, by the way, that's another way of being able to gauge the interest in what are we going to do moving forward? Is yeah. it feasible to put together a hundred million dollar Crash Bandicoot game? Well, let's release all the other bad Bandicoot games on Game Pass and let's see the engagement. If the engagement is high, then I'll green. Then that's when Phil can green light a hundred million dollar Crash Bandicoot uh, adventure. Right. Or. Another re, uh, re, like a let's say a complete reimagining of Tony Hawk. If they're going to put a hundred million into that, uh, you know they'll do that. But let let's see how it does first in Game Pass. Right? These are all things that they can gauge and measure, and it's very interesting to do that to move forward, so that they can look at the analytics and say, well, you know, we only had five million people touch Tony Hawk. That's probably not worth it right now. Maybe we'll remake some of the games uh, and then we'll take it from there, or maybe not do anything at all. Right. So this is an interesting litmus test going forward. I'd be very, very curious. That's what got me more interested than anything else. I'd like to see the engagement of all the titles that all of us in this chat and, and this panel grew up with. Right. We're the guys and gals who grew up in the early aughts playing the Tony Hawks, playing the Crash Bandicoots, even in the 90s, whatever else, and, and, and the early Call of Duties, things like that. So it'd be interesting to see where that would go from there. Right. So that it, we'll see that if this new generation of gamers, uh, you know, uh, cling on to those new t- those old legacy titles and see if Microsoft can put a new spin on it in the future. So that'd be well, very interesting. Mag, so you you bring yes. up a, a really interesting point, and that's why I wish we didn't have to talk about this legal stuff because what you're talking about is going to be the the really fun stuff after the deal closes. Because, sure, yeah, it's exciting. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, look at your equation right there, and just let me add one more variable. What happens when the addition of Call of Duty and Diablo and whatever Activision titles shoots Game Pass into the stratosphere of a hundred million? You're stealing yeah. my uh, subject, users, right? <laughs> Right at at that point, you're gonna launch games, and they they can have twenty million in their first twenty four hours. Right, yeah. right, and that's gonna completely change the equation because all those people playing it there in Game Pass will now be advertisement for the people will who will not be in. They're not on subscriptions, but they will go and buy it in Steam and wherever else. Right. And so I think you're gonna see bigger budget games actually greenlit that are less risky than the 200 million dollar sony things where if they don't sell for 70 dollars yes. in that opening window yep. and so i think that does make things uh, uh, a lot more interesting and i, I i'm really excited to get to that piece uh, uh, of the conversation but maybe we'll talk, we're talking about it on monday who knows <laughs> yeah, i can't I mean, wait yeah. i'm excited for that stuff and, and you know what? Let's let's continue. Hargeet, I want to bring you in now. Uh, uh, we just let me just catch up with some of the super chats because uh, Gerald Mack uh, asks. Uh, he drops an additional two dollars super chat and says, "Have we hit thirteen k? Let's go. Can we do it?" Uh, the answer is no. We are literally twenty two subscribers away. That's what we are short. Twenty two subscribers. All right. We have nearly nine hundred people here. I mean, folks, listen, throw me a bone. Uh, for, uh, you know, I, I'm just saying that I do this five days a week, and this would be a big deal because obviously 13K, I, I had put goals for me and Mrs. Boom at the beginning of the year to hit 15. We will have smashed through two of those goals. So if you're not subbed and you want to help me, please, by all means, don't don't be shy. I won't charge you any money. Just hit the subscribe button. But um, Hargeet, look. If there's one thing as Xbox fans, and, I, and I've been guilty of this, uh, I have been saying for a long time that uh, Microsoft is missing their own equatable hero, their, their, their own hero that can, they can sink their teeth into, like Sony fans do with Spider-Man and now Wolverine, and potentially, folks, a third game by Insomniac that has not been announced yet that is a Marvel IP. We just don't know what it is. Um, if there's one game out of this entire catalog that I must see come back and done in a way with big budget and a lot and, 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 and powerful graphics, it's Prototype. That could be their own hero game because Prototype, if you guys and gals have never played it, is absolutely astoundingly fantastic. Uh, so that's that's my one pick, but. For you, Hargeet, what 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 jumps off the page once this deal is consummated? What once it's done? So as we know, I play obscure games. I don't just look at the big games. So uh, for me, I started gaming in the '80s, and uh, there was this little company that back then called Sierra Online, and that company Booyah. is now yeah, part man. of Microsoft. 
Yep. And that company had things like King's Quest, Police Quest, Space Quest, and Quest for Glory, and Gabriel best, Knight. And the best games of the oh, 80s, Gargi. I <laughs> love those Best games, games of the 80s. Yeah, love those games. games. So yep. what I want to see, I want to see King's Quest brought back. Make it, like, realistic looking. I don't care, but, like, bring that back in a new way. Yep. And then uh, Gabriel Knight. Gabriel Knight was their adult theme, mature story driven you know game it, and that series was fantastic there's a company called phoenix online studios that's kind of been trying to keep that alive with the original person who wrote that jane jensen uh go buy them they're like 25 people it's a small ass studio in new york go buy them and expand that and like make new like remake the old ones and and, and bring that back like so i want those kind of games like i like their back catalog of stuff like that um certainly a prototype is a, a great idea Another thing they could do, I don't know if they want to do it, Disney is hurting. Oh, they yes. could walk over and say, uh, you know, we have a back catalog of all these games that Activision made that has Disney IP that we don't have a license for. Uh, how about we work out a deal that we can get a license, put those games in back and pat, and suddenly you now get all these Spider-Man games. and Which, by the way, Alliance games and, <laughs> you know, whatever else. Let me else, tell right? you, Hargeet, I don't know if you played them. But I could tell you this: I've beaten them multiple times. The yep. Spider-Man, the two Spider-Man B knock games, were so freaking good. They they <laughs> were the multiverse before we even knew there was a multiverse. Yep. So I mean, that's something they could do, and it's it's very little effort as far as actually getting the games up and running. Right? It's just to make sure that they actually work in back and pat. My assumption was they didn't come in because licensing headaches. Yes. Right? So. If that can be resolved, if Microsoft can walk over to Disney and say, "Yo, why, why don't we work this out? Uh, let's let's write a check." And well, they have a good relationship. Obviously, they went and Obviously changed enough, the paperwork right? with, Indy. with Indiana Jones, right? So hey, yeah, boom. so this is a potential, or, right? Or, that they or, could or, say, or "Is it worth it?" <laughs> How much better does that relationship get with Disney when Microsoft says we can offer bring your IP to a hundred million Game Pass subscribers? Yeah, it does. If they can get to 100 million Game Pass subscribers. Well, yeah, sure, 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 sure. I'm just saying the more it goes up, the bigger deals they can do. Yeah, right and now. of course it's Microsoft. And right now Disney needs cash. <laughs> it's just yep. a fact there. They're, like yep. every part of their business is going down. So, um, you know, what the heck, right? Just uh, it's it's for nothing, right? They, there's no new game development. It's, it's, these are games that exist. They're, they're available. You just need a license. So it's just something they could go do, right? So uh, that's something they could potentially pull off. The first question is, are they going to slow down that uh, Call of Duty you know, engine? Uh, if they are, then cool, right? If it's still every year, then they either have to expand to keep that going or they have to let it go that way. And I'd love uh, to see them it. slow it down, if, so it, in me, my opinion. Like yeah. The multiplayer can keep going with seasons, fine. But the campaign, let's just say that's going to come every two, three years, right? Yeah, and that way I agree. you free up the studios. Because honestly, look, the last few games are remakes. They've run out of ideas. They're bringing yeah. back games that they made like back in the uh, 2000 whatever, right? With, with the 360, right? Yep. With Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare. 2007, 2009. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> we're not getting anything new anyway, right? Why don't we let them like go come up with something new and cool and, and like come back to Call of Duty with a new campaign when you have something new to tell us, right? Uh, instead of just remake, 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 which is just taking time, right? It is what it is. I'm sure there'll be a great game this year as well, but... It's a remake. It's a rehash. So uh, I'd like to see them slow that down, let them come up with new things, right, and see what else they can come up with. Like, it, I, I know the multiplayer needs to be there, and they'll keep making that money. That's fair. And a lot of it, by the way, is not on consoles. It's actually on mobile. That came out of the trial, right? But a lot of the players are actually on mobile. It's not just Yeah, consoles. 51% actually, which is <laughs> so, sick. So yeah, they're making crazy. their money no matter what, right? What campaign hey. are they playing on mobile? None. So, you know, it is what it is. Like, that the campaign is cool. Usually it's like five ten percent of the players actually bother with the campaign. Yep, Less I'm one of them. But finish it. <laughs> right? Me too. Like, you know, so it's like okay, I, you might as well just say keep the 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 multiplayer stuff going, and we'll do a campaign Call of Duty every couple of years, three years, whatever it is, right? And that way they can free up some of these studios to do other things. That's that's what I'd hope they do, but I don't know if this ten years thing locks them into something or not. That's kind of annoying, which is why I hated Ooh, these ten year deals. I don't. That's I don't a good point, Hargeet. Does I that mean them. that 10 years means they have to release a COD every exactly. year? Uh, I, well, just, so like, I hate that idea. That's an interesting question. Uh, I'd I, like to I, know. I, I yeah. don't think it is because I feel like I it would have came up in, in the testimony. But there is some breaking news, gentlemen. 
Okay. Well, Microsoft has responded to the yeah. FTC. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, this is uh, Brad Smith. He says the district court ruling makes crystal clear that the acquisition is good for both competition and consumers. Brad Smith, Microsoft's vice president, chair and president said in a statement, we're disappointed that the FTC is continuing to pursue what has become a demonstrably weak case. And we will oppose further efforts to delay the ability to close uh, and move forward. Yeah. Which means they're going to close, right? Which means that uh, they knew this was coming. Of course they did. And yeah. uh, Lulu tweeted also. Oh, of course changed. she did. <laughs> <laughs> right? And she says that uh, we're confident the U.S. will remain among the 39 countries where the merger can close. We look forward to reinforcing the strength of our case in court. Dot, dot, dot. Again. Wow. Oh, wow. Ooh, she put again? Wow. Yep. That's balls. Yeah, well, you know, wow. she's she's. Uh, I'm a big fan because <laughs> yeah. she she kind of just says it like it is, and and she's not lying, and Brad Smith is not lying, and it's just it's it's really just a complete joke. But uh, I I like what you're putting down, Hargeet. I, I, I like I said, I I think, uh, and you know something, uh, my brother would be if he's listening, is probably clapping right along with you because he loved all those games growing up. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. What and, about a two hundred million dollar full uh, sixty FPS remake of uh, Leisure Suit Larry with full frontal nudity? Oh wow! I, I, I think mean, we should do that as well. I mean, that, that's uh, probably top that of the list to... for sure. <laughs> no, they sold it. They sold it. But they do did they not... still have Police Quest and King's Quest? They have that King's Quest. They now have. the yep. King's Quest remake that was made six years ago, seven years ago. <laughs> yeah. Who is that? That's them. Yeah, that's them as well. That's yeah, Activision, right? So that's Activision. Um, yeah. The one with uh, Christopher Lloyd playing yep. the old King Graham and all that stuff. Yeah, and that was pretty cool, right? Episodic. It was pretty it was cool, pretty man. Nice. I liked it. I enjoyed um, it. But yeah, I wouldn't mind having a more realistic look for that if they want to go down that path, right? That'd and be awesome, and just like bring Fable. That back. Um, oh my god, yeah, like a Fable right? version of King's Quest. Literally, Holy yeah, exactly, me. right? Like a Fable. What about thing. Pitfall? Can yeah, we that's get another one. Uh, no, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, this this is a stretch. It's funny when this deal was first announced. I said, could you imagine if uh, they actually took Pitfall Harry that we all played and died a thousand times over those goddamn alligators? Yep. Um, <laughs> on those Apple II computers. Yes, uh, and actually just said, "Hey, t pick a team." We want this to look like a Tomb Raider well, game. Well, or well, didn't they the release that game? Here's they, the they problem with Pitfall that. They 3D on the PC in the, in the late did. 90s. Yeah, they, they, they were okay. It was, it was pretty decent. I mean, it wasn't here's great. But here, here's the problem. Well, right? Do yeah. you still need Pitfall if you have Tomb Raider? Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. Well, yeah, listen, true. or Tomb Raider. <laughs> Because I, I, I still think I, th I still think Eidos and Crystal and and and, and, uh, and potential. if we're talking future things, that's something they could potentially push, right? They could work with Embracer, who's also hurting. Yeah, yes. hey, you know what? You have Lord of the Rings as an IP. We'll license that from you for the next five to ten years at X amount. So that's not a purchase, right? That's just licensing. That's just licensing. Yeah. Along with that, we would like to purchase under the uh, the limit purchase crystal dynamics for whatever 110 million along with the tomb raider ip you know Would this gives them clout uh hargeet right mm. this gives them clout because once they actually have that let's say what everborn was saying let's say the theoretical like up to 100 million subs at some point that's when they can call the shots very much Indeed. how sony calls the shots right yes. now right yes. with these third party with these third party companies sony always calls the shots and says yeah. you're going to you're 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 developing this for the ps5 first and then you can go develop for the series x and that's why a lot of times the performance suffers or whatever right yeah. so when you're at 100 million subs you're calling the shots look at yeah. me i'm the captain now yeah. you know what i'm yeah. saying that's, that's what they can do yeah, and that's all so, cool. I'm just looking at ways for them to buy these things without having to go through regulatory headaches. Yes. So I want them all under the Even not the, even the purchasing, radar. but to the influence, Hargi. Even so, the influence of being able to make deals. Is, I'm, I'm excited where you're going with it. Yeah, so I hope they can pick up Crystal. It just makes a lot of sense. They're already using them. They're pretty much a first party. <laughs> Might as well just like, like, get that done. The I other agree. one that just bugs me, Asobo. Why isn't that done? It's under nice. 100 million. Just it's... pick them up already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please. Certain Affinity is another one. Simulator. Like they're making two games plus your new Halo. They're, they're, they're helping on Fable. 
Yeah. I, yes, that's, that's and Crystal true, D is but, helping on. It's just, that it would makes be some another, sense. Like, that would put it over the couple hundred million range, right? So but I'm they like, can okay. buy them separately. Not if it's two purchases. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what? Everborn brought this up. Years later, sure, right? But Everborn brought this up a year ago. We no moves are going to be made till this is done. <laughs> yeah, I agree. A thousand percent. You know, yeah, Everborn's yeah. been saying that from day one. He says, you watch, it's going to be real quiet for the next year. And he's been bang on. Yeah. Much to Kia uh, uh, you know. I'm hoping. Yeah, Kia is small. listening. And he's, yeah, he's his, probably, it's like, Kia Kia melting like, like to him. Yeah, he's right. melting <laughs> like the guys at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark <laughs> listening to me say that. But oh yeah, that Everborn's right. But he was right. Okay, You know, he's right. He's right. He is. He said it. And they've been awfully quiet, right? And they're not making those moves. So here's the other yeah. one that we always keep hearing about is platformers, right? Yes. We, we will now finally have some pretty big platformers. And we might get Sega. Okay, but that's a different story. But... Talk about it. No, no, no. Keep going. <laughs> but... I think you should elaborate. <laughs> but, but with this acquisition, we do get Spyro. We do get uh, Crash. There's older IPs like Conquer and, and uh, Banjo-Kazooie. Mm -hmm. And there's many others, I'm sure. But... Uh, there is a potential here that they could actually say, hey, hey, Beanox, why don't you go make a good platformer, uh, whatever you want to do, or take one of the Banjo Kazooie Toys for Bob. It, it, yeah, be, okay, yeah, Toys for Bob. Uh, it, it, pick one, right? So, like, and, and Beanox did the Transformers games. Did they do that? Yes, they did. Yes. Okay. And so that license has kind of lapsed and that's gone away. That's another potential that they could go get that license or, or again, go make a platformer, uh, make it a bit more, you know, different i guess but don't use an ip like that right so it could be that it could be toys for bob take uh, they did crash four right they did crash and spiral they did both right? and so hey they could just go do one of those but it'd be nice to see something interesting in that realm who did the, the like the mashups they have like a crash team rumble or something that just came out uh, crash team racing uh, yeah uh, i'm not i'm not sure if that's toys for bob or not i'm actually not sure about that but uh I, I, you know, again, Crash I, I Rumble, yeah. Crash Team Rumble yeah. just came out last month, and it's not Disney doing Play. good. It's it ne it needs Game Pass injection. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so like, but those kind of games could suddenly that was Toys for Bob. Uh, could suddenly get a whole bunch of other characters, right? So yeah. or, or you can start bringing in a whole bunch of the the Xbox catalog that has a catalog of characters. So it's just an interesting thing that they can start putting together a bunch of things. Um, but yeah, so platformer, right? That, there's something there, right? That we could potentially yeah. look at. Uh, but there's also the potential of going and getting Sega and saying, well, your platformer now is. Is Sonic. Sonic. <laughs> so, yeah. You'd have Sonic. You'd have Banjo. You'd have Crash. You'd have Spyro. You'd have uh, Conquer. Yep. It's just absurd. absurd. And I know everybody wants to have a different mascot, but I, I I can't walk away from from me. It's it's still Master Chief. I like Xbox to me. Okay, I hear you. It's still listen. Master Chief. No, no, no. no. Master, Master Chief is the is the mascot <laughs> to take on the PlayStation, and Sonic <laughs> will take on Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, okay. There you go. See, that, I always always I always. <laughs> I like it. I like it. But one bad mother. Let, let's get your hot take on this before anyone steals your ideas. But folks, <laughs> real quick, for the love of Jehovah, we're nine subs away from 13K. Hey, Can we get let's freaking go. nine I think we're going to get it on the show. If you're not subscribed, let's get Please. us over the line. Come on. Just, we can just, do it. Just tap it in. <clears throat> just, just boop. That's it. You don't even have to hit the bell icon. Hey. Trust me, you're going to want this content. But nine subs away. I mean, come on, do, do a brother a favor, but uh, let's let's get your let's get your hot take on this one, bed mother. What I mean, obviously, there's a lot of things exciting about this deal. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know which which IP jumps off the for me. Like Call of Duty multiplayer means nothing. I, I like the single player. I'm like that five percent of people that play it and enjoy it. Try to even get a thousand achievements points out of it, uh, like I did with Modern Warfare, uh, the remake of the of, of, of Modern Warfare One. I loved it so much. I played through it like multiple times. Um, what, what's for you, the, like, like the most exciting part of the deal? Well, uh, obviously if, if, if they don't end up, uh, bringing back geometry wars, this deal is a waste of time for me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually I, I have told the story. Geometry wars is one of my favorite games of all time. Did not uh, wrong with that game. It's very so, addicting, dude. Yep. If you if you remember back in the uh, so when the Xbox 360 launched, my yes. my my thought at the time was I'm going to be playing a lot of Perfect Dark Zero. Uh, after a little while, I was playing a lot of Geometry Wars because Perfect Dark Zero wasn't very good. Uh, and my my baby girl would kept me up. She was just born, kept me up all night when that at the same time that system launched. So I would sit. She'd sit in my lap and I would play that thing until like my eyes were like. 
Uh, I remember one day I went to the bathroom. My eyes were like so bloodshot that <laughs> I, I thought like somebody stabbed me in both eyes, and I was oh like, I got to retire from the game. I was sixth in the world at that time, and I had to retire because I'm like, I'm going to actually uh, explode my eyes if I if I if I try to go any further. But um, no, you know, uh, but on, on a serious note, and I am serious about that. I want to see Jared Schwartz come back, but. Uh, some other things that stand out, you, you know, like just thinking a little bit more outside the box, because if I'm completely, uh, you know, candid about it, you know, Activision Blizzard as a king as they exist today. Yeah, it's great. Like for me personally, like it, I'll, I'll play the some Call of Duties when they come to Game Pass, but I, I can usually take or leave Call of Duties. They aren't the thing that I look forward to every year, um, you know, and Diablo is probably the four is probably the first blizzard game that i put a lot of time into so you know i haven't historically been a huge blizzard guy and obviously you know king i don't care uh so um but when i look at some of the potential you know one of the things that gets really overlooked and and one of the reasons why i'm sure this is you know a concern for sony and some regulators and stuff like that is is if you really were to look at the the companies that have the the most mind share that have the best marketing say what you want about abk whether you like their games you don't like their games you hate the way the companies you know run, been run whatever last few years they're probably the only company that competes with sony when it comes to marketing and messaging oh dude no doubt yeah it, and and pretty much in blizzard whenever they throw something out there like i remember when overwatch was coming out i forget the name of the game that was trying to compete with them at the time but like you pretty much knew uh what was the game that died right off the bat it was from the um Battle, was it Battle Lawbreakers? Like, was that no Battle? No, 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 the, the Battle Born thing. Yeah. That was awful, dude. Yeah. That was terrible. Oh <laughs> well, my god! Yeah, I, it was I, bad. I remember at the time, as soon as as soon as they said, "Hey, we're you know coming out at the same time," everybody <laughs> knew Battleborn was dead before they played a minute of the game. So yeah. you know, Blizzard is one is another one of those companies, Activision and Blizzard. Uh, you know, Activision's marketing, obviously, Call of Duty uh, is bigger than anything. Um, but you know, people even underrate, like you, you look at the, uh, last crash that came out, I think it sold like 4 million or five, I don't know what it was. Tony Hawk. I mean, they have a lot of, they, they, Tony they Hawk get, could be big. Yeah, Dude, absolutely. It, thousand percent. Make, yeah. And, 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 you know, obviously I don't think they helped the development, but of, of destiny, but they helped the marketing, you know, they, that game started off as a sub 80 Metacritic, right? What people complain, no content. They put, they marketed the hell out of that thing. And that game, you know, is, is I think a lot of that, a lot of that marketing push is what really kind of gave that second le legs and life. And so when I think about that stuff, it's like, you know, we talk, like thinking outside the box, they have IPs that, you know, at one time they were going to spin off Starcraft, right? That was going to become Starcraft. Game. I hope that they bring that back because that would be such a major win for uh, the Asian region, dude. If they bring that back and they and somehow make a mobile version, pff, oh my god! Well, yeah, Starcraft the RTS. But you know what? What about Starcraft the single ghost? Player? You're yeah. talking about Ghost. Oh yeah. my god! Yes, <laughs> one of the coolest uh, official xbox magazine covers ever uh the most i i wanted the game just because i don't know like that that cover still sticks in my head um and just the way they described it you know obviously it probably didn't play well behind the scenes at the time or didn't meet their standards but think about that think about getting a team together uh for a single player narrative driven maybe stealthy sci-fi stealthy type game you know what what else? i think a lot of people <clears throat> maybe envisioned perfect dark was going to be right like you could probably do something like that with the starcraft ghost and you have a starcraft license and you have a a blizzard you know backing it D you could do the same thing with warcraft like warcraft uh, you know we think about the rts we think about world of warcraft that's another universe that could you could take that you could make RP single player RPGs out of that, right? They, Microsoft has a lot of RPG studios, just like the cross um, licensing between uh, the studios. You know, I, everybody's already mentioned Banjo uh, with Toys for Bob. You know, that's one side of it, but you can feed it the other way too. Like maybe Ninja Theory after Hellblade two, maybe they grab a, a license and make a, a a single player narrative driven game out of something in in one of those worlds. So there's like the the potential with all these IPs and all these studios. It just like you can get extremely creative. 
And, you know, it does get missed that, yes, they are a, a Call of Duty factory. Um, you know, a lot of a good portion of their, 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 their talent is working on Call of Duty. I, I like I've had this debate with people. I struggled to see how they're going to scale it back because even though Microsoft does want diversity and more IPs, Call of Duty, Call of Duty is going to, it's going to lift up. It's going to lift up all, it's going to lift like the, the, the waves that's going to lift up all their boats uh, that, you know, when it comes to game pass and you think about uh, it's really going to, you know, help elevate every one of their studios in terms of exposure. It's kind of like for, I think, uh, when you think about the marketing, when you think about the fact that the soccer mom knows what Call of Duty is because their kids, all the kids know what it is. Um, Indeed. You, you want to keep it relevant, right? Like Call of yep. Duty is one of those games. I know like sometimes it dips, but then it comes, you know, it, they have a good release. It, it goes right back up and it's still always at the top of the sales charts every year. So, you know, like I think it's just one of those things they're going to continue to pump out regardless. But, you know, now that I, they've been hiring a lot of people, apparently. I, yeah, I when they when the deal was first announced, they had 10,000 employees. Now they yeah. have 17,000. So like, that is how you free up the other studios mm -hmm. by putting more resources into the studios. Potentially, that right? Work on it. So well, here's, yeah. I mean, here's an interesting one, right? Uh, you're, you're saying uh, StarCraft. Who? Could, what if they do buy Sega? They have Relic. And Relic oh, made yeah. Age I of mean, yeah, no, no, That's the next Let's show. Go that's talk the next that show. Talk. <laughs> right? They made Age of Empires. The Company of Heroes is that them as well, I think, right? But yes. so they could take that on, right? That the, could be a thing that they take on, right? So the you have a, a talented team War, that could take yeah. that IP and move it forward. Just saying. Don't forget the Hexen t-shirt, guys. Like the <laughs> Phil was wearing. Well, that's that's well, happening. But, but, like Blizzard, I think, again, uh, we don't know what Blizzard's worth. I think we hit, did we hit 13K? 13k yes it happened it 13 there it is you're welcome no, I'm just kidding. thank you chat <laughs> there thank it is. you to near near 850 yeah. people still here i i can't thank you enough this has been a an amazing okay. journey this turned in from a hobby from a guy that was forced to retire to here we are five days a week uh it's just i can't thank you enough mrs boom and i are incredibly grateful for the support 13k man we did it thank you guys there it is it. congratulations all right thank you good news. thank you congrats yes. boo man uh, thank yeah, you, you and, it, and the follow-up good news <laughs> is that the appeal is going to be denied <laughs> and the deal is going to close on monday oh you know no you know it what that shows is that you know microsoft's money was well spent you know i'm just kidding. yeah it's it's <laughs> it's uh, yeah i mean listen i i'm moving into the the the, the, the mansion next week it's you know they're even paying me to fly me out there, so this is pretty great. This is you know th that's that's the show money that I get. Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. oh, nothing to do with your hard work. It's the, it's, no, it's the show money. Not, yeah, not, yeah, not, not, nothing to do with five days a week. <laughs> and, and you know what? Real quick, I do. I want to do a shout out to, to Randall Thor because if you ever, I, I've been a fan before I was even a, actually a podcaster of Randall Thor. I think when, when I when I found Randall Thor, he had like three thousand subs or something like that. And he's closing in on 100,000, which is well-deserved. Uh, if you want to hear an unhinged Randall Thor, which I was very taken aback. Because Rand is, you know, he curses every now and again. But I don't know when, who when he was it so that, yeah. he was possessed, that said yeah. something like pretty nasty about his, his hard work. Uh, and he he dropped like, like three or four like on the air, full-throated pause. Uh, F bomb, yeah, which is uh, which is unlikely. I mean, th th he doesn't really do that, but no, it's very I want to say that yeah, good for him, good for him for defending himself because I love Rand, I love Jez, uh, I think they do such a great job each and every week. Um, and for someone to attack that dude, like that guy, only has love for the community. So I was, I was, I was happy to see him snap back or clap back, as the kids say. The way he did, uh, and it was quite funny. It's quite interesting. It was me that attacked Rand, so just in case anybody uh, knew. Well, no, no, sorry, he's sorry. Gonna, uh, <laughs> he's taking a picture of you uh, right now. Oh, uh, uh, Rand and I, Rand and I, have been going back and forth for weeks. It's fantastic. Uh, weeks, years at this point. <laughs> oh no! Uh, All right, so oh, one bad mother. Let, let, let's get your finished your your, your yeah, hot take yeah. on this, and we will get Everborn to get in here, and then we'll read the super chats and get everyone out. Uh, All right. So yeah, so. Yeah, like just uh, you know, uh, continue, you know, can kind of continue on some of those thoughts. So, like, it, it, I know that that the the initial, I think initially, like the a lot of us enthusiasts would like to see Call of Duty go by by year by annual, but I I think that probably the 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 answer is going to be 
they'll just expand, you know, right? Like, I think they do need to expand the extend the amount of time that they work on each of these because I, know, I agree. Three, yeah. Three years mm-hmm. is just not enough time these days for a triple A game that has both single and multiplayer. So I think, you know, they'll probably add another team They'll but they'll continue to do it year after year because call of duty isn't just like, it, it doesn't work like other games. I think that it's actually sort of a social event for a lot of people. Like they expect every year, they're going to go out with them and them friends. It's just like a thing they do. Like there's people that just, we're going to take off work and me and the, me and the, the crew are just going to get on and play some, you know, call of duty. And that's just kind of, I don't think you want to break that social cadence. So they, I think they're going to do everything they can to keep it yearly, but what it's going to do though. And I think the, the part that was kind of exciting, even if you're not into the ABK, the, the, the IPs that they've been putting out more in more recent years is that what it does is it's going to dilute a lot of risk, right? When you start to look at the gaming division, the bottom, the amount of monies that's going to go come and go in there, you know, you can take a, you can take a risk on a hundred million dollar game and it's just going to kind of like, you know, like sneak through the, the cracks there that where the, the investors and stuff like that aren't going to notice. And plus you, you know, with game pass being a safety net, I think that's going to, you know, really like that combination is really going to allow them to take a lot of the risks that we just talked about. Um, The fact that they did unionize through this process, by the way, you know, like we talk about the regulatory, I mean, the EU got, you know, that was something that came through this process. The unions kind of came on board and Microsoft said, okay, I think that's actually can, could help them uh, when it comes to recruiting talent to kind of know that they have that, that uh, at the studio, at least as an option. So, uh, the fact that they are, you know, moving management, I think they can start to pull talent again because there yep. was a time, there was a time from what I heard from some developers is people that, that thing about all the stuff that kind of came out a couple of years ago, um, people in the industry knew about that for, for, you know, for a while, like people that never yeah. worked at Activision Blizzard heard from somebody who heard from somebody, there was stuff there and people didn't want to go there. Um, so now, you know, you start to move that, that over, it's a fresh start for them. A fresh start is always exciting to kind of be, you know, part of something new. So I think there's going to be an opportunity for them to continue to hire. And when you have call of duty and you have candy crush, uh, you know, the answer really isn't, you know, cutting back on the games. It's just going to be, uh, just build up the studio more so you can give them more time to develop those games. And I think that's probably, that's my prediction. But uh, the final thing on that is I think this is going to be a tipping point for Game Pass in a few years when, yeah. when Call of Duty starts hitting it. Uh, and that's where I have an invested interest. I don't care. Like, if that's supposed to be embarrassing for some reason, uh, you know, for to have an invested interest in this going through. I want to see Game Pass disrupt the market. I don't, I don't, you know, like... You know, it's funny when people try to uh, guilt people, other consumers online over that. It's like, well, you weren't really writing articles or tweeting about, you know, double A developers going under or even some of the smaller independent, you know, so, or some of the bigger independents, you know, struggling in, you know, the previous generation. You didn't, you, you don't seem to be too worried about the indies that come out that get really high scores and nobody ever finds out about them. You know, they score really high with like six reviewers and, and nobody ever plays their games and they go away and you never hear from them again. Nobody ever talks about that. And I think, you know, I, you know, I hope it disrupts the market and I hope because I think it is something when you think about where the industry was last generation, where mm-hmm. we got to a point where the biggest publishers the bit the the richest companies were, were weren't really taking huge risks i mean say what you want you know sony did bring out some new ips but the ones that were successful looked like the old ips um you know ubisoft uh, ea uh activision blizzard uh uh, uh basically uh, take two they if you look at what their output was compared to the previous generation you know, it was a lot less, a lot less new IPs, a lot less single player games. Uh, and, you know, the double A's kind of dried up for a little bit. And so I look at this as like just an opportunity for, you know, it's almost like the, <laughs> it's it's not just good for gamers. It's good for, for it's going to be good for some developers. And I realize that it's not going to be good for everybody, but it's going to be good for a lot of developers to find their audiences. And I think, you know, people always just think about it as a one-way street. I look at it almost like, 
you know, you think about, <laughs> on, I know this is going to sound weird, but it's almost like online dating, but it's gamers and developers. We're going to find the match, right? And I think there's a lot of times where in this market, where the market's been, where you have to spend $70 to try out something that you might not even play for five hours because it doesn't click. And that's why, you know, consumers don't take the risks there when there's free to play games. I think now, you know, you're, you're going to see this kind of tip the market. Uh, I think Game Pass is going to probably, uh, it's going to give Game Pass the opportunity to be a disruptor. And I do think that others will have to react. Maybe not exactly the same, but Sony will probably have to react, right? They're going to have to do something different. And and I think that's going to be exciting. Uh, and as a consumer, I'm excited about that. I don't think there's, and I think, and I think that's the, the final thing I'd say. I'm excited for the games I don't even know exist uh that we're going to get to play that are going to be great games because of this yeah so to add to that one bad mellow you bring up an interesting point about uh the studios needing to expand because if you want to do even an annual cadence the first thing that's going to happen is no crunch so that's yeah. going to change the whole development 100%. cycle yeah so it's going to lengthen it you're going to you're there's gonna no lengthen. way out of it if they're going to keep it yearly, there's no, it's not even just, a, it's not even just about, uh, you know, like, like people talking about, yeah, like they would have, they'll have to go, you know, biannual or whatever to do it. No, I think no matter what, I think they need to expand, right? They need to expand. They, they need to increase the development cycles. I agree with that aspect because there's no other way you're going to fit that into Microsoft's, you know, no crunch yeah. culture, the unionization that's now begun at, at ABK. You're going to have to, uh, there, for triple A games, you need you need at least four years for something like this. Even something like Call of Duty, which really hasn't evolved much in you know since the 360 and the campaign side of things. But you know, I think until the tools get there to kind of help them out, I think they're going to need to uh, have an extra team uh, and, and just it, it, no matter what, you're going to have to lengthen the the, the death. You, well, you're going to have to. There's, I mean, a couple of things out of that. You're going to have to lengthen the the development time from two, three, you know, from th a two to three to four to five, and you're going to have to expand the team. You're going to have to yeah. make these teams bigger. And look, at the end of the day, this is going to be great for gaming. It's going to be great for the Xbox Game Pass. But let let's get uh, um, Everborn Saga's uh, take on what is exciting to him on you know on the deal. Like what what IP jumps off the off the page. Um, so this is like super interesting to me because as an OG Xbox fan, uh, I always looked at like COD as like, because remember like COD wasn't always this big. It used to be kind of at the same level or even less than Halo. And then it kind of hit the stratosphere when they did the World War II stuff. Right. Um, and so you know, I haven't been playing COD games since like 2014. I've just kind of been done with them. So to me, I would be getting in back into that. And that's kind of the least interesting thing to me. What I would what I want to see from the deal is like what you guys say. Um, what what happens when um you either delay, like not delay, but like go to a biannual release, which I don't think if you listen to the court hearings and how the board is expecting this to be making money on year one, right? It's actually a big question for me uh, as to what will change. And Mag, you said I was right a lot, right? Yeah. I want to put a prediction. <laughs> you had to bring there. that up, eh? Of course I did. Of course yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, I, I do want to put a prediction out there. All right. I do not think Bobby K is going to leave as fast as people think he is. No, I don't think so either. You know what? I agree uh, with that 100%. He's going to be there for a bit. Right? Because he has yep. to train whoever his predecessor is. And I'm going to assume they're going to, Microsoft is going to want somebody in place that they, from like their in house. So whether that's Sarah Bond or somebody else, Phil's not going anywhere anytime soon. So maybe Sarah Bond runs uh, Activision, but that will not be day one because someone is going to have to get acclimated with that. And That's you're right. going to want to learn the business stuff that, that that Bobby K knows, right? There's a reason that they kind of deliver what they are able to deliver. And I, what, okay, you want to know what's exciting to me, right? Let's say they do go to biannual COD, right? But let's say we know other studios are going to help 343 with Halo. What if you have Infinity Ward help 343 with Halo 
And remember back when they used to be a gear in the 360 days, you had a gears and then a halo and then a gears and then a halo. What if you went back and forth between uh, uh, a COD and a halo, but halo as big as, as COD, right? With That's all crazy. that support and, 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 and treatment have like the that. Ability. I'm right. Yeah. And, and, and and again, it, <laughs> use it, that it COD can, engine. <laughs> right. This is what I'm saying. So it and it, and it gets it gets even better. Right. Because the, the power of uh, um, COD is that 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 support pipeline that they have. So imagine if th that is also applied towards Halo. Right. And Unbelievable. you, That'd be you think about that and then you think about we know the coalition is going to kill it and then we know it is going to kill the next doom or quake or whatever they do. So the 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 idea for me for this is, you know, I, I, t I said it before, I think that 10 billion dollars would have been more interesting. But when we think about the realistic effects of this and the disruption it can cause, I'm right there with you. Uh, uh, OBM is that this has the ability to change the industry and the reason sony did not want this to happen is once microsoft commits 70 billion dollars to this thing that people were calling a side business it's world domination mode right and sony i probably shouldn't say this before the deal closes but sony <laughs> knows how microsoft gets when they take things seriously mm -hmm. do you remember uh um slack that everybody used to use and then microsoft said oh that's nice and they made teams look at the, look at teams and where's that now right um, the tip of the spear right yeah. so I, so so everyone i said this specific thing right when they say we're all in on something be you need be, to watch be, out you need to be you <laughs> right? need to be cautious right? yeah I, I agree does not play the the when, when they're actually serious when it's a side thing it's like okay fine but understand this today the expo the gaming division makes 16 billion dollars in a year right? right windows 24 billion dollars a year you add activision's 9 billion alone this that well, let's let's forget about the synergies forget about the, the the cost savings that will drive up profit margins right right because amy hood wants to get it to a 40 percent uh operating uh uh or netic 40 percent profit rate right 40% uh, 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 operating income, right? And Xbox is not there, but Activision will make that happen. But again, you add 9 billion to uh, 16 billion, how much is that? 25 billion. You know what that makes? Gaming at Microsoft, it makes it bigger than Windows from a revenue perspective. Now, do you think Microsoft is not going to take that seriously? You saw what they did with Office. You saw what they did with Windows. You see what they're going to do at some point with Azure because they're, 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 again, smaller than AWS by a lot, but they are growing way faster, right? So, again, when Microsoft takes something seriously, be very afraid. And, and, and this is not about... Oh, they're gonna buy up everybody. They don't need to. But when right. Microsoft commits developers and resources to something, especially something that is getting traction, right? At that point, you're gonna see iteration happen faster and faster, and the competition will not be able to keep up with the the games that they're putting out. And they won't even have to buy anybody else, right? They didn't buy anybody to make teams. Right. They're doing this now. So they have that IP, but really they have the talent and workforce. You have that. You have a revenue driver that is bigger than Windows. That would make it its third largest business only behind cloud and, and, and office. Be it's crazy. Afraid. So yeah. that to me, it's the whole ecosystem of things. And I've talked about the data, the data play for this and how they want to get into the ad space. You add that with Chat GPT, which is helping them to to combat or or, or compete with Google in the search space, um, and in the ad space, they also want to compete with Google, and and this will help them do that. So, to me, if this helps get 
game pass to that hundred million number and cod won't do that alone but that level of excitement does lead to that that will increase budget for other things and it will give microsoft a greater presence in the market and i don't need them to overtake sony i just need it to be very expensive for sony to do their third party money hat deals because then uh, a square or someone else there's no need to buy them because your audience is too big to ignore and yeah. that's what this is all about right yeah. so what people don't understand and i will wrap up with this um people will will tell you don't make moral arguments about the fact that you lose games right They'll tell you it's just business until the business cuts against them. Then they'll turn back to a moral argument. And then you'll, you'll say, hey, you just told me not to make a moral argument. Then you know what they'll do? They'll do a purity test talking about organic growth <laughs> and other nonsense. So here's the thing. Here's the thing what happens here, right? Sony made it uneconomical for Microsoft to do second party deals. Right. And micro, you can say that Microsoft added to that, but understand the way they added to that is because they some of your favorite franchises started as exclusives under the Xbox. Microsoft partnered with these people, but those partnerships only benefit you when you are the market leader. Once Microsoft was no longer the market leader, all those franchises that they helped launch saw greater success on Sony's platform. So guess what? If Microsoft wants to go to an EA or 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 or, or someone else or or, or or do second party deals, it's going to cost them way more money to cut out the PlayStation base. So in order to prove us in the gaming community on Twitter so that they can get street credit from us, they should spend 500 million on an exclusive when the for a game they don't own, or should they spend seven billion and just buy it and own everything? From yeah, that I'd rather spend the, the right? billions. So yeah. at, at the end of the day, if you make it uh, uneconomical to do these second party deals and it becomes cheaper to buy a publisher, guess what they're going to do? They're going to buy a publisher, right? And there's no the, the the effect to you, right? You're not a shareholder, and if you are a shareholder, it is not significant enough, right? You you are not a Warren Buffett. You're not a car icon. You get you got a couple of Microsoft stock or Sony stock in your 401k. Fantastic, right? You're talking about this from a gamer's perspective. And guess what? As an Xbox gamer, I lost a lot of games. And now with these acquisitions, I won't lose those games anymore. Yeah, a good point. So man. you told me it was just business. Then don't cry now. So it's just business. And um, I say all that to say. Uh, once the market share flips back, at least becomes closer to where Xbox is too big to ignore, I, I bet you you'll watch these acquisitions stop. Yeah, no, I bet I you mean, they'll listen, stop because there won't be any need to. They, Microsoft no, ev everyone's going to come to Microsoft at that point. Then yeah. buy them. But if yeah. if you can't get that, and if you they, what they want Microsoft to do is compete on terms that are favorable to Sony. <laughs> And they yeah. know what they're saying. They know the mental gymnastics they're doing, but they're like, ah, you can't get me. I'm saying organic. I'm doing a purity test. No, you know Microsoft well, doesn't win that battle. You want them to throw away money. So, so if they're going to so throw everyone, away money, I would push back on the organic thing and say, who put uh, Elder Scrolls on console? Who paid to get that done? Microsoft. Microsoft did, yeah. Sure did. Microsoft with Morrowind. Exclusive. It's still exclusive. Only Xbox ever did that, right? So, and then uh, Oblivion started as an exclusive, and then eventually made it onto PlayStation, right? As well, and then uh, Skyrim came out on the on both, right? But so it was Microsoft working with with Bethesda to make that happen. Is that not organic growth? Is that not something they they fostered and made happen? You, you, you want to talk on to Activision? Okay. Who who has Call of Duty? There, there was who has the only exclusive Call of Duty? That Xbox, would also be Xbox. OGs. Yep. Yeah, so that would also be Xbox. Who who made Call of Duty what it is? It's the partnership of Xbox with its Indeed. online ecosystem on the 360 that launched you know Call of Duty into what it is. So I, I don't buy that it's not organic. They made that happen along with Activision. Obviously, Activision was involved, right? But it was Xbox that made that happen. I, I don't I, these are organic Xbox to me. This is organic. and Xbox Live and that community <clears throat> exactly. on COD started and its first 10 years of existence. Microsoft the had the market. But you want to talk about yeah. you want to talk about real organic, 
Re remember what operating system was running in the Dreamcast, Argy? Uh, that would be Windows, Windows. sir. Yes. Windows CE, yes. Yep. Yeah. And Windows. do you remember where Sega migrated most of their games to and they OG were exclusives Xbox. OG, yeah, right. OG their Xbox fucking right? executive moved over from Sega right. to Xbox Peter yeah. Moore yeah <laughs> Peter so. Moore who was who launched the Dreamcast one of the if not the greatest console ever released he went and he at, during the 360 days ran Xbox 360 so again if we want to talk about organic it would be Sega Maybe. Yeah, listen. We, yep, to me, but I'm going to end my, my rant That's with that. That's all okay. I got. <laughs> well, listen, I, all I can say is that, first of all, number one, a big thank you to nearly 900 people here tonight. Uh, a big thank you for uh, helping us get to 13K here at Double Barrel Gaming. We got it. Thank you so much. Let me just catch up on the Super Chats and do outros. Uh, Spartan661 says, uh, ABK is done and Xbox owned. Hold the line. Don't give up, Xbox fans. We celebrate on what we want. Xbox gives uh, gives what we want. Have you uh, have you a la carte? Uh, it, listen, I, I agree a thousand percent, and the deal is gonna is it's just this is is gonna be done. Edwin Garcia drops a very generous five dollars super chat and says, "Big fan of the panel. Everyone ha is a huge inspiration in different ways." Well, welcome, um, Edwin, and thank you for the kind words. Uh, Maxi Coleman drops a very generous five dollars super chance. Says right now, every legacy Call of Duty is being updated on Xbox, and matchmaking is working again. That's something. Um, Zatanna uh, Bathory drops a very generous five dollars super chance. Says WB Game Studios and DC Comics, which has been burning down, license out DC to Disney for Marvel crossover movies. Also, pick up. Paradox Interactive. See, Paradox would be a good pickup, I think. I, I agree there. WB, I mean, it's such a big deal to get those. I don't know. May, maybe sometime next year. But I, I say this is for me, this, it's a Sega play. Uh, Spartan next, 661. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say, thank you. Spartan 661 drops an additional $2. Super Chat says, Brad Smith is better. Uh, call uh, uh, Brad Smith is better. Call Sal a better version. Oh, okay. I mean, if you say so. Uh, I, I like Brad. He's uh, I've had him on the show a couple of times. Uh, Corey Tidwell drops a very generous five dollars super chat and says they're offering uh, uh, GS twelves to potential attorneys for the FTC. The deal was never in danger of getting blocked. Um, I don't know what that means. Does anyone know what GS twelves are to potential attorneys? Nobody wants to pick up this case. Nobody would definitely. Uh, your baby father drops a very generous two dollars. Super chat says breaking FTC files appeal. In Microsoft, yeah, we talked about that, brother. Thank you for the generosity. Uh, we have, uh, okay, now I don't know how to pronounce this. E A U No. So maybe I'm I'm missing something here. He drops a very generous ten dollar super chat, and he says this: FTC's appeal, based on the use of probably, uh, will S L C when statue the, the statue uh, statue says may S L C. Uh, they're forgetting that the uh, uh, forgetting substantially either way. It's only a 5.5 swing. Uh, still having Sony in the lead isn't substantial. Yeah, I, thousand percent. That's great, yeah, Michael but, Mooney. But, but yes. here's the thing: they don't have that evidence, and they can only they can't introduce new evidence. That's correct. They have to go made based on up what's their there. number to even get to the 5.5 percent. Right, the number that they that they claim to have based the twenty percent on is a report that they did not read, and even in that report, if you if you actually read it, you would see that that report and that number only leads to a one percent share shift. Right, but even so, in that, so, it, substantial means that they can't survive. Right, so that's what substantial it, means. It's a lessening of competition is a hundred percent allowed. That's the whole point. That's competition. Right. Substantial right. means they need this input to survive. Is that happening? You can't. No, listen. I mean, you just look at Nintendo and say, nope, Steam, they survived. In fact, they thrived. So you know I don't get it. Stone Cold <laughs> Killer for all this, and we can you know, leave it for the next couple of days because Brad Smith literally said they're not letting anything delay them. Right. He, yeah. He, he, ju he just tweeted it like right now. He was like, We're, we oppose any further delays. But here's the Stone Cold Killer, what Judge Corley said in her statement, right? Um, she said if the FTC's view uh, of the Section 7 
law uh, 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 of just may without substantially, that means any vertical merger is illegal. Yeah, which is ridiculous. That exactly. Is, right? It, it, it you, even make that, that means there's no case, no anything. And she's going to want the court to uphold that and and or, or go, go overturn their own judge it's, to it's, listen to them. Yeah. Two Republicans, one Democrat. Just I saying. love it. There you go. Just saying. Michael Mooney drops a very Saturday. generous five pounds. Super chat says it would be interesting to bring in military slash sci-fi book writers to reboot Call of Duty. I mean, that would be that's an interesting theory for sure. They did advanced they, warfare, right? They did one futuristic one a couple of years back. Right? No one People liked didn't it. Seem to like it, right? No one liked it. No one like yeah. everyone hated it. It still um, sold like twenty five million copies. Yeah, but, of course. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I liked it because it was listen, like Titanfall. You could run bring, on walls. Br- ha- bring the, you can reuse some of that for the next Halo. I'm just saying. maybe <laughs> maybe. Uh, uh, Igmatic Dreams drops a two dollar super chat and says Activision has Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle publishing rights. I think that they do. Uh, um, uh, RC Polygons drops an additional, a very generous five dollar super chat and says, I would love to see a Battlefield slash Call of Duty cross promotion once Microsoft has marketing rights for Call of Duty, Call of Duty, and Battlefield on Xbox Game Pass. That, that'd be sick. I, I don't want, know if that ever happened, you, you but want some cross marketing. What if you do, um, uh, um, uh, Indiana Jones, um, uh, Tomb Raider. Pitfall Jack and Tomb oh. Raider? Yeah, it, put them listen, all together, one game. I, I will take it. Uh, Spartan six six one drops an additional, very generous two dollars super chat and says, "Boom!" And all on the channel are awesome. We got it. Yeah, brother, thank you so much for that. Appreciate the kind words. And last but no way least, Jax eighty two drops a very generous two dollars super chat and says, "Everborn is killing it right now." Really great. And brother, thank you so much. Thank and you, thank speaking you. of Everborn, sell your brand, brother. Talk about the Everborn saga on where people can get that. What you got going on? For the remainder of the year, are you going to be at New York Comic Con? I'm I'm waiting for the response. We put the request in. I'm waiting for one of the sales rep to get back to me so he can go and pay for the table on the main floor. They emailed me the other day, but they haven't they haven't responded yet since that last email. So we shall see. Trying to get in there, but I do have some uh, backdoor ways to get in there. Pause. Um, (laughs) Also. Um, we are, uh, just about, we have like 10 pages left on Ariel's adventure chapter two. It's going to be a very large, uh, book, uh, nearly 80 pages, 70 something pages. Um, and for that's for a single chapter. And, um, we are, you know, we're working on the games. We're doing hand drawn animations now. So it's going to look really cool. I hope I've I've been sharing some of that. And if you've been seeing the pages that I've been sharing, they're gorgeous, dude. You see, this is why it's taking so long. Like, like I know a lot of people are waiting, but I promise you when you get this book in your hands, we are trying to do quality that is above what you buy from the majors and we're doing it all. It's a small team of us all self-funded. So uh, when that launches, we're going to do a Kickstarter. And I hope you all guys join me. Oh, I'm definitely jumping it. on that. Like I have just, all done all because, of Yeah. Listen, when we do that Kickstarter, there are other people that see it because it, it, it gauges the popularity of the, the, the franchise we're trying to put together. So I'm just saying it now. There's, there's 800 people in here. However many people are in here. Uh, we will be announcing it soon. But like, yeah, you yeah we'll, we'll we'll promote the hell out of it, brother. I don't I it. don't launch the Kickstarters until the book is done because I want to make sure everybody gets it. That's why we didn't launch it yet. But it's coming soon. Everbornsaga.com. You can see the books that we have right now. Nice, nice. Uh, Hargeet Chani, uh, please yeah. sell not only your personal brand because obviously you have a podcast with Soaker eighty seven each and every week. You're also on Dealer's Show, which last night's show was freaking crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> and also, you of course work with Gaz and Asa. And I gotta say, the I saw the clip that uh Gaz put up where he said he was going to bang someone's wife when he was with Colt. I nearly freaking fell out of my chair. Uh, I can only imagine what the I don't know if you saw that stream while they were dancing. Oh my god, dude. It's it was it was, <laughs> it, was, it, was it was it was just so great. It was great. It was, so, but sell, sell the brand, brother. Talk about and, it. And I just saw apparently, and I don't advocate hacking or anything, but apparently Tom Warren has up that the FTC's Wikipedia page was hacked. Uh 
and and they, well, I guess act. It was briefly vandalized to have it oh, be. Uh, yes, Sony everyone can PC. update uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Wikipedia. It's community managed, so someone the, the head being uh, Jim Ryan, not Lena. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, now we got two sauce videos to do. Uh, the one, uh, of course, on the uh, the uh, how to trick a pony program uh, that is still <laughs> in the works. And we will get that out. Uh, and then there's the the next one, which is of course all the salts from all the people who who thought. Oh, I can't wait, blocked. dude! I, I I freaking can't wait. We are absolutely putting that together. So, uh, but Gaz unfortunately has it's a lot of work, so he's, he's going through overtime. Anyway, so it, it's coming. Uh, we'll hopefully get a whole bunch of cameos in, in, in the how to trick a pony program <laughs> video, but, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, and yeah, and then, uh, Zelda gaming. I don't even know if we're doing that. I guess I'll have to ask if, uh, if we're going to do tomorrow's or not. Uh, Zocker has been really busy, so we'll have to see if he's available. Hopefully he is. That would be tomorrow, eight o'clock U S Eastern time uh, on Zocker 87's channel. And of course, RDX is, uh, is on dealer gaming's channel on Tuesdays at 8 PM U S Eastern time. And of course here, primetime gaming. And I seem to come on quite a bit nowadays because so much news keeps there's coming, so much, you know, coming there's up. so much happening. So bro. I keep coming up on, on Boom's other shows during the week. Uh, but yeah, primetime gaming, uh, seven o'clock, of course, U S Eastern time. Uh, so catch us here again, and and congrats, Boom, on thirteen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's 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 it's, it's it, was, it was great to have that happen uh, on such a triumphant week for Xbox. <laughs> Uh, but thank you so much. For hold that. the line. We're still oh, going to hold the line. <laughs> hold We're the holding line. the line. <laughs> damn right. And last in the way, least one bad mother. What do you got going on, brother? You you're doing your own thing. You got your. You're going to be launching your own YouTube channel soon enough. Uh, yeah. Talk about it, where people could reach out to you on social media. Yeah. Uh, if you want to find me, well, first of all, uh, thank you uh, for having me again. It's always great to be uh, be able to talk about this stuff with my friends. And I, you know, I do agree with um, yeah, Everborn that this process was enlightening and it was interesting but i will be honest uh i feel like you, you remember that episode of uh uh where fonzie jumped the shark i feel like we we had that episode a long time ago so i'm ready <laughs> ready to move on uh to things that are i think just a lot more fun so i think uh having po <laughs> regulatory political discussions is not as much fun as I think some of the stuff that's going to be coming up. So, uh, but yeah, thanks again for having me. Congratulations, man. I'm uh, happy. I was here for that. Thank you, sir. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. I know you're like super hardworking. So it's awesome to see, Thank uh, you. see you being rewarded. And uh, yeah, if they want to find me right now, uh, the best place is just uh, follow me on Twitter at, uh, you know, uh, mother underscore one M U T H A underscore O N E. And uh, I will, at, at some point, uh, you know, announce the channel name and have some content with it. So, uh, so yeah, keep a lookout for that, but uh, always, uh, as always, uh, just feel, you know, honored and appreciate the fact that, you know, you thought of me to come with these conversations. Uh, this is, it's a, it's, it's a good time to kind of, uh, kind of be closing, you know, be here when we're closing one chapter and ready to kind of move into some more fun things. But uh, uh, looking forward to, uh, you know, everything here in the near future. Thank you, brother. It's great to have everyone here uh, again. Thank you, chat, for the outstanding uh, support and getting us past 13. We're at 13 K. 1305. Uh, so we actually got five more subs past the 13, which is amazing. Uh, so many super chats. My goodness. Thank you so much for the generosity. I'm glad I was able to get to every one of them because that really does bug me. I, like I said last night, uh, I lost sleep over not being able to read the super chats, which is why I did that stream. If you missed the stream, check it out. Uh, I write, I read through 83 super chats, but I also answer a bunch of questions and we have, we made it a nice 90 minutes. It was solo, just me. I was dying by the end. Like I had to have like a, I had to like take lozenges because my throat was screaming. Because you know when you speak ninety minutes by yourself, it's it's tough. But thank you so much for that. And of course, I'm going to close out the show, folks, with something that's incredibly important to me. Hopefully, one day it'll be important to you. And that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids. And he would say, "Craig, treat others how you want to be treated." And also, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules, son. I can guarantee you. You're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. We'll see you next week on the newest episode of Primetime Gaming with Mr. Boomstick and Friends. Yeah.